All right, ladies and gentlemen, it did not take long, but we are getting ready for the start of the NASCAR Xfinity Series race. They weren't kidding about 9 o'clock. We have no time for a pre-race here as we are about to get racing. They've already gotten the one-to-go signal. Uh, Jesse Love, the pole setter for this race, has elected the outside lane for this initial start. Austin Hill, also on the front row and all RCR front row. A lot of Chevys qualifying very well. Top seven positions in qualifying on Saturday uh, afternoon were taken by Chevys. The highest qualifying Ford, which we still got to pull the uh, raw feed up real quick. I'll get right on that. Uh, looks like the highest qualifying Ford was the 98 car of Riley Herbst as he ended up qualifying in the 11th place position. I was not expecting cars to be on track already, like, right when I started this live stream. I was expecting, like, something before then. Like, I was expecting, like, 15 to 20 minutes after the fact. They they aren't kidding. They're rushing around. They're going to get this in in a timely matter. Late Monday night NASCAR. And the second stream of our doubleheader here today. For those of you that had watched and or listened to the Daytona 500 live commentary stream, appreciate you guys. Uh, coming back to watch this as well as those that did tune in for that race. Had a lot of fun bringing you the Daytona 500 for the second consecutive year on the channel all the way through Speed Week's our final stream to cap off Speed Week on the channel. Try to get this stream to 100 likes before the end of it. Field is working their way off of turn four right now. The pace car will be headed to pit road. Well, double duty for the second time this week. We had truck Arca doubleheader Friday night. Here we go on another late night during speed week. 30 laps in each of the first two stages. 60 laps in the final stage pit window is 45 to 50 laps. Pit speed 55 miles per hour. Green flags in the air. And tonight's main event, the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Daytona as they are underway. Early start for the two of Jesse Love. Running full-time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this season. Will pop down in front of his teammate on the WL line of Austin Hill. Hill, the super speedway ace in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. He's my pick to win the race, and he is the odds-on favorite. Both of them moving to the outside very quickly on the back straightaway now simultaneously as they look to take control of things early. A.J. Allmendinger, who just got done running the Daytona 500, had a top five finish nonetheless in the Daytona 500 in less than an hour after the calm down, if you call it that, after the fact he is right here running this race. John Hunter Nemechek, also a top 10 finish in the Daytona 500, and they're running this race. Five drivers pulling double duty, though three of which uh, did not finish on the lead lap, and only two of them actually finished the race earlier today. Which again were the two in the top 10 of Nemechek and Ullmendinger. So they're going to try to complete 800 miles here tonight. This race usually taking place in the daytime and then finishing in the night. All in the night, obviously, with a late start. Love was the leader at the end of the first lap. Austin Hill was second. And still remains that way at the front of the field. At the end of lap two at the start finish line, Jesse Love again is your race leader. Austin Hill second, Parker Kligerman third, Justin Allgaier fourth, and John Hunter Nemechek rounds out the top five. The bow tie brigade can't hook up and make it happen in the draft. Yeah, that's why I think John Hunter Nemechek said, I don't want to be a part of this. Let me dive this bottom and see if I can put my Toyota in the front of this race, he's got a nice push there by Allmendinger, and there you see Van Giesbergen right behind as well. Yeah, A.J. Allmendinger is so good at this final racing, and he, he knows when to give somebody a push, when not to, how to get off their bumper when they're starting to get in the corner, not get them sideways. He's uh, he's really good at a restrictor flight type race. This is, this is what these drivers needed to do. You know, they're too wide, they're strung out pretty good, but they're learning. They're seeing how their cars handle, what kind of grip they've got, how they can pull up, how they can draft. There's a lot of go there's a lot going on right now behind the wheel. It looks like maybe they're on the line, but they're on the gas, they're lifting, they're trying to get runs, they're understanding what their car has and how they can get to the front. 
Yeah, just looking at the lap times, they're not really soft pedaling around here like we saw some of the races happen in the 500. Some of those guys were really kind of saving fuel, and not really running full throttle. These guys look like they're pretty pretty well hammered down. I, I think the Xfinity guys yeah. know one thing. Yeah, hammered down. <laughs> That's right. Well, wide go. open. And these stages are only 30 laps, so they can go all the way on a tank of fuel without having to stop like we saw the green flag stops in the stages in the 500. I was going to say the balance is different here in the way you approach the race because of that. Shorter stages and you know you can make it to the end of the stage on fuel. I'm pretty sure you have intimate information about the strategy for RCR today. I talked to America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds. He said he thinks the play is to run to the end of the stage, end of the stage, and then run to about lap 75 and get gas and be done on that pit road. That's pretty much it. I'm not going to give away anything, but I think that's that's pretty close to what uh, the, the winning strategy is going to be. Maybe get four tires at the end of that second stage. If you're going to change tires, that would be the time to do it. Look at those cars move around. I'm telling you, I think it's all over the place. Listen to Daniel Suarez, out of the gas. gas. Suarez, 2016 Series champion, full-time in Cup now. Comes from Monterey, Mexico. He's had quite a career since coming to the States. Won a Cup race last year, two years ago, at Sonoma. And won an awesome NASCAR Mexico race out at the Coliseum in L.A. That was cool to see him win there. Austin Hill running second right now. Alex Johnson just understanding Regan. What are they saying down there in the pits? Everything going good? Well, Michael, you hear Austin Hill saying how good his car is right now. That's important. There were some small changes aerodynamically to these race cars before this Daytona race. They put slits in the back window to allow some of the air to escape. Austin told me yesterday he felt like that changed the handling of his race car, that this first stage was going to be critical in order to make the right adjustment. And keep in mind, these guys won't get a lot of chances to adjust. They need to get it right early on so they can be good later on. <laughs> yeah, those slots that they put in the rear glass is kind of like, uh, it, it matches what the Cub guys are doing for cooling, cooling the drivers to get air moving in the car. It does make the cars make a little more rear downforce. So it changes the balance a little bit. Uh, the guys, you know, got a pretty good handle on it, but I honestly think that it's going to make the cars more stable, uh, possibly in these drafting situations. The other thing I thought in regard to handling, these teams got 50 minutes of practice here on Friday, and it was during the day much warmer than what it is now, and they certainly were not in a draft like this. Did, how much did they learn then that can transfer to tonight? Yeah, they can learn a few things. They didn't get many laps, but they did at least figure out what their car was going to feel like. Seven flaps in, and the rookies led them all. Jesse Love in front of his teammate, Austin Hill. Kligerman, Allgaier, Alfredo, the top five, were rolling in Daytona. Well, here we go. Single file lineup around the top of the racetrack for the time being. A very patient start to this 300-mile race. Jesse Love leads the way. A lot of Chevys at the front of the field. Austin Hill still in second. Parker Kligerman third. Justin Allgaier fourth. Anthony Alfredo is in fifth. Sixth place is Sammy Smith. John Hunter Nemechek seventh. Sheldon Creed eighth. Jeb Burton in ninth. And Daniel Suarez rounds out the top ten. So again, appreciate everybody tuning in here for this live commentary stream. The second on the day, 800 miles of NASCAR action at Daytona on the high banks here from this evening now into the late night hours on the East Coast. Once again, thanks for everybody uh, tuning in here. As far as me, yeah, I will be. I, I see it in the chat already. I will be tired at work tomorrow, I'm sure. I, uh, I am going to have a late arrival. Um, I'm going to put in some sick time. I have to wait until the next day to put it in. So if this race does go to midnight, there you go. Otherwise, I might be just staying up till midnight just to uh, put that in because I don't want to have to set my alarm at like 4 o'clock in the morning just to put that in. But uh, I will uh, I will end up having to get up between like 6.30, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. But at least it gives me like 6 to 7 hours roughly of sleep better than like 4 or 5 like it's looking like it could be uh, if I didn't end up putting that in. Good thing I got that sick time left. All right. Uh, as far as everybody tuning into the stream right now, Billy Kramer, Terry Lewis, Ice Demon King, 92 Hammer, NASCAR 2311 Cup Series Racing, Robert Perkle, Bond 1771. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Mark Wodkowski, Patrick Shadley, welcome back. Dan Bowers, welcome to the stream. Mike G. What else we got here? Zachary Schumann. Schuschman. Jojo, thanks for tuning in. 
Uh, Patty and Rundy Creations as well. Jackson Thomas. AJ Summers. Scout Gaming. Hopeful. Michael Turner. Welcome to the stream. Just those of you that were in the chat either waiting for the start of the race are now in the chat as the race goes on. Energy-wise, for me, I feel good. I did sleep in a little bit earlier today, and I'm glad I did. I didn't think the Xfinity race was going to be ran. I actually thought the 500 would be the main event, and uh, I got done just before 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I would have imagined that that was going to be the end of the night, but yeah, that's not the case. We've still got some live commentary action coming for you guys here tonight. The end of the Daytona 500 stream, I didn't go through the uh, live commentary slate for next week and the schedule there, so I'll make sure I do that at some point during the course of this stream here today. And then again, right at the end of it later tonight, for those of you that stay up. Daytona 500, fairly quick though, 3 hours and 11 minutes for a 500 mile race. Pretty fast one at that. 158 mile per hour average race speed. About 20 miles per hour off the record. And only the five cautions for incident, including the one that ended the race. Again, congrats to William Byron and Hendrick Motorsports for winning the Daytona 500. First career 500. I was mentioning, too, in the pre-race, I did mention it throughout the course of the race, but I was hoping that we had an established veteran win the Daytona 500. And even though Byron's only 26 years of age, making the championship four, winning six races last year, and already having double digits in the win total in his NASCAR Cup career, I would say that William Byron is an established veteran for the years to come. So it is uh, good to see uh, someone like that win the 500 after three years in a row of having some upset winners in the Daytona 500. Um, I didn't have Byron in my list of six drivers who I thought that could potentially win the race. I went with the statistics, and uh, that is only the first time in NASCAR history that somebody starting 18th or worse had won the Daytona 500 back-to-back uh, -back seasons now William Byron started in the 18th place position so he was like right on that cutoff um so now it is nobody has started worse than 18th back-to-back -back years in a row and won the 500 so it was close uh, the stat line's close it moved just a little bit but uh, we'll have that to uh, look forward next year I'll have to try to remember that stat line and hopefully search back to that stat line next year when I try to figure out who I think is going to win the Daytona 500 when the time comes Maybe I can hit once this weekend. I did pick Austin Hill to win this Xfinity Series race, so there, there's still a shot there. And he's right up there in second. He has almost single-handedly dominated the Xfinity Series on Super Speedway since stepping full-time into the NASCAR Xfinity Series a couple of seasons ago. Also has a truck win at Talladega as well earlier in his NASCAR career. Almost halfway through stage one already. Again, only 30 laps in this first stage. And they will not have to pit for any fuel in stage one and stage two. As long as they pit during the stage break or late caution stage one, whatever plays into the strategy, then they will not have to make a green flag stop until potentially the final stage of the race. Tire field, single file. And only the top 11 cars are within one second of the race lead. It's amazing the slower lap times of these Xfinity cars compared to the Cup cars. I mean, there were Cup cars running as fast of laps in the 45-second lap time uh, barrier. Xfinity Series, about 48 in the draft. Uh, right now, obviously, before the tires started falling off a little bit, we were looking at the mid-47, so about two seconds slower lap uh, out faster. So we may see those speeds grow throughout the course of the day as teams make more adjustments to the race cars and maybe overall just pushing just a little bit harder. But right now, pretty straightforward, and again, everybody running single file up near the wall here in the early laps of this race. I would imagine somebody's going to pull out a line at some point in time uh, towards the end of stage one, but it might be another 10 plus laps before we see that the way things are going, again, with not having to make that pit stop. Up to 52 likes on the stream. I know I'm just shy of 150 in the Cup Series race. It'd be insane if we topped that in this Xfinity race. We did have quite a few likes because the stream has been open for like almost two days. <laughs> uh, obviously, this race was supposed to take place at 5 p.m. on Saturday, so over 48 hours later before the start of 
the actual race itself. Daniel Suarez peeked out of line a little bit. Riley Herbst probably thought he was going for it. Herbst jumped out of line with Suarez. Suarez went back into line. Herbst is not going to be able to squeeze himself in there. He's extremely close trying to side draft Daniel Suarez. All it's doing is pulling the 14 back and allowing for cars further behind to kind of fill that gap up. And Riley Herbst is going to be going backwards. He's going to be losing a lot of track position. Yeah. A couple of drivers racing side by side that just finished up the Daytona 500. Herbst was... 24th, Suarez ended up 34th after getting in that crash. Ryan Truex in the 19. Okay, looks like uh, oh, that was made a, a, he made a ball there that wasn't there. That was tight. I'm going to predict the spotter did not say. I don't think he did all either. Clear. <laughs> I think he did after he was in yes. line. Sam Mayer dives the bottom. They're getting antsy. They want to do something about this train running around the top. You see Sam there, first guy on the bottom in that orange car. Yeah, you see that gap? That gap. I will say Cole Custer probably tried to leave as much of a gap as he could, even though it wasn't much of one to allow his teammate Riley Herbst to get in. So I'm sure there was some sort of team orders there, and uh, not so much that Herbst just forced his way in there, although it did look like that. Um, I'll cut him a little bit of slack considering there was a teammate there, and that was by design. Sam Mayer was also out of line. He lost quite a few positions, now falling back to 20th. He was in the mix of the final lap at Daytona last year and ended up on his lid. He did make the championship four, though, in the Xfinity Series last season, so trying to do that two seasons in a row here in 2024. Only 12 drivers qualify for the Xfinity Series playoffs. It is a 26-race regular season, the same as the Cup Series, but the playoffs is one round shorter of only seven races. So there's more of a chance of potentially getting 12 or more winners, but with the lack of competitive cars maybe in the Xfinity Series is why we haven't run into this kind of an issue before. And we tend to still see a few drivers at the season's end qualify on points, but this is a chance for one of those underdog teams to get a win, which we see maybe more often in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series on these super speedways than in the Cup side. On a super speedway race to super speedway race, uh, trend. Couldn't think of a word. It's getting late. I've had about five hours of streaming already today, and we still got probably another hour and a half to two hours to go. <laughs> oh, man. Here we are. Got 83 current viewers watching. This race on a Monday night. Again, appreciate everybody tuning in all day throughout the action on the channel. I will say the Daytona 500 being ran on a Monday absolutely killed my viewership this year <laughs> compared to last year when I did commentary for the 500. That stinks, you know. I was looking forward to it. It was still a fun race. Still had a fun time. We always have a fun time watching races on the channel. It, it's just weird. This is such a weird feeling, at least for me, doing commentary of a race after the Daytona 500. Like, it almost doesn't even feel like the Daytona 500 was ran. It just felt like a normal cup race. I don't know if you guys feel the same. That's just the way I feel about it. For like the build up was there through the race, it was there. But then like after it was over, I was just kind of left feeling like, yeah, we got another race left. Like I don't know. It just I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was it ending. You know, we didn't have like an all time finish or something like that. I don't know what it was. We had great racing. Don't get me wrong. There was some great racing. A lot of three wide action. I mean, really the entire final stage, they were three wide, probably three quarters of the final stage, and they didn't wreck until eight to go. An impressive job by all those guys. A lot of blocking going on post green flag pit stops, and they were able to run for probably 12 plus laps of probably the most wild super speedway racing that you'll find. And uh, again, everybody did a great job up until that point. Can't believe your prediction was wrong. I mean, it's hard to predict the Daytona 500. <laughs> I did the best I could, and my driver finished 19th. So, I mean, it's it's tough. And that driver being Denny Hamlin. I had a good run, though. I picked Hamlin to win the Clash, and then the two dual races second and second. Like, I had a good run going. It was bound to end at some point. You know, go figure. It's a super speedway race with 40 cars on the track, and Next week's going to be hard, too. Got another super speedway at Atlanta next week. So uh, once we get through that, I think the predictions will probably be a little bit better. Although it was 4 for 4 today on predicting drivers uh, top 10, not top 10. So it wasn't like it was a terrible weekend for predictions for me for the 500. But 
I like I like uh, being above 500. I don't like right being right on that bubble. Or sorry, I was three three and uh, three and five. I was below 500. My bad. Three and five. Only right top ten predictions I had were Eric Jones and Christopher Bell, and then uh, Cindric didn't finish there, and neither did Keselowski, Logano, or Hamlin. And then uh, the don't haves. I was right on Suarez not getting there, and Truex was well behind. Oh man, big carnage going on right now. I can't tell what corner that is on the racetrack, but Sam Mayer has taken a massive impact. Looked like three really, really hard impacts. See who's all involved in that. Looks to be at least three cars, if not more. Uh, Sam Mayer is in it. Haley Deegan in the 15 cars got significant damage. Uh, Daniel Suarez is in it. There's more than three cars here. Big names in this incident. I think Suarez is, I don't want to say he's okay with wrecking, but I think he's okay with going to bed early tonight. We're running the Daytona 500 there and just finishing up again roughly an hour ago. Like you said, Adam, just good race cars. See what we can tell what happens here. This is the Wendy's on board. Uh oh. Yeah. Looked like a big stack up, really. Yeah, and yeah. Daniel got out of the gas, and whoever was right behind Daniel didn't didn't see the stack up or didn't get the word. And there's Haley. Running into the back of the Wendy's car. I think about Sam Mayer, and I rewinded this race a year ago, and he was in the hunt, had a chance to win it on the final lap, and if you remember, coming off turn two, got upside down. Scary yeah. crash for him, and tonight eliminated that early. Hit right there. Boy, that was a hard hit. Yeah, you don't like to see those angles. Tough break for a driver who ended last season so strong. You could see Daniel's eyes. He looked up in the mirror because he knew he was off the gas, and he wanted to make sure that the, the person behind him wasn't going to hit him. And as soon as he looked up, bam, contact. So how do you avoid that? I mean, it's very difficult. You can't see two cars ahead of you, so it's just tough. You see the fire come out the exhaust, somebody let off, and bam. Wicked hit for Sam Mayer, uh, for sure, in there after getting right hooked into the wall at full speed, basically, going into turn one after Suarez's car turned down the racetrack uh, after contact from behind. Still hard to tell exactly who the first car was in line behind Suarez. Uh, Haley Deegan later piled into the back of the 99 of Suarez in the middle of one and two, and then Kyle Weatherman obviously uh, got a piece of the incident as well. I think he got into the back of Deegan after Deegan got into Suarez, so... Four cars involved in the incident, I would imagine all four are going to retire from the race. Again, Daniel Suarez, Sam Mayer, Haley Deegan, and Kyle Weatherman were the four involved in this 38-car field. We'll go through the full field running order here at the end of lap 23 under the caution late in stage one. Should get a restart in here before the end of the stage and have a quick dash for those stage points. And might see, uh, actually we will see quite a few cars, I'm sure, coming to pit road so they can pit for fuel now. Get track position for those that don't stay out to get the points. And during the stage, and then the field will probably flip-flop from how we see it at the end of stage one with drivers staying out to get points versus uh, drivers coming into pit and trying to get the track position on the other side of the stage break. So Jesse Love leads, Austin Hill second, Parker Kligerman third, Justin Allgaier in fourth, Anthony Alfredo fifth, John Hunter Nemechek is sixth, Sam Mayer seventh, Sheldon Creed eighth, Jeb Burton ninth, Ryan Truex is tenth, Cole Custer eleventh, Brandon Jones twelfth, 13th place for A.J. Allmendinger, Daniel Dye, 14th, Parker Retzlaff, 15th, Shane Van Gisbergen, 16th, 17th place is Jeremy Clements, Riley Hurst, 18th, Ryan Sieg, 19th, Josh Balicki, 20th, Josh Williams, 21st, Chandler Smith, 22nd, Natalie Decker, 23rd, Brandon Poole, 24th, Garrett Smithley, 25th, Leland Honeyman, 26th, Dawson Cram, 27th, Patrick Emmerly, 28th, Jordan Anderson, 29th, Blaine Perkins, 30th, Sage Carrot, 31st, Ryan Ellis, 32nd, Frankie Muniz, 33rd, BJ McLeod, 34th, Daniel Suarez, uh, more than likely will be out of the race in 35th. 
36th place finish for Sam Mayer, Haley Deegan, 37th, Kyle Weatherman, 38th. After the Stage 1 caution, which took place at lap 22 out of 120. Take a quick little ad break here while we're waiting for the race to come back on. You're listening live to the United Rentals 300 at Daytona. Pit Road not open this time by. Dean of Daniel Suarez. Daniel was off the gas and got hit from behind. Yeah, it's not sure why he had to get out of the gas so abruptly. Yeah. I mean, they were just all in a line running, looked, looked fairly smooth. And then, wow, this is not what you'd normally see here. You know, most of these wrecks happen when they're running two or three wide and running into the side of each other. Clearly, drivers are hungry for a big win in Daytona today, but Trackhouse drivers Daniel Suarez and Shane Van Gisbergen were hungry for a win at the Wendy's Big <laughs> Golf Course. This is Go Biggie, sponsored by Wendy's. All right, welcome to the first annual Wendy's Go Biggie Golf Invitational. We've got track house stars Daniel Suarez and Shane Van Gisbergen. And the biggest thing about today is sweet prizes. So they get the Wendy's Biggie Bag. Our amigo Daniel Suarez, he's up first. And coming up next, it is Shane. And you know what? I know these two are friends on the track and teammates. That was all gas and no brakes. Congratulations to our amigo Daniel Suarez, the Biggie Bag. Woo! I think the hat was actually would actually clarify as going biggie. You know, <laughs> uh, that was a major statement. Yeah, it was. There's some biggie traffic at that Wendy's in the infield. Adam swung through there, got me a frosty, get a burger. Good stuff. For Dennis Suarez, this is his seventh start here in an Xfinity car. Only a seventh or what eighth place finish is his best that he's had. So this is a probably a disappointment for him. Well, I had a chance to win the 500. Run oh, up yeah, front, right gets there. Crashed in the big one yeah. late, finishes 34th. Here's what we're talking about on board with the 99 right here. Oh, listen to that. He had the gas wide open. He's all home. Just couldn't quite get through it. Well, he was in a really good spot, too. I knew he got involved in the crash, and watching the replay, I still, looking at all that clean track in front of him, was convinced yeah. that he was going to drive through unscathed. Listen, listen. Out of the gas, right back in it, but yeah, he's, he was standing in it. Nothing he could do. Crew Chief Andy. Would you forego stage points right here and get that track position for the next stage? Well, if I'm trying to run for points, I think I would stay out. If you're up in the top ten, you're in the stage points now. Oh. I think you take them. If you're not in the stage points, there's no reason not to come down. We've right got now. some takers. Oh, Justin, yeah. I'll got our first one out of the top five to come down. And these are series regulars. These are drivers that want and need those points. They said, I'll come down and get a little fuel, maybe some tires. We're going to mix it up. That's what these stage breaks do. They give you an opportunity to use strategy to get track position. That's exactly what we're seeing. Daniel be a Dye, handful of laps to make it up. But Ryan C., Sammy Smith, Jeremy Clements, Patrick Emmerling, Blaine Perkins, all making pit stops here. They'll all cycle to the front after the stage break and the how, other cars pit. But uh, how many of them get, can get there before the stage break? How uh, many times have we seen that? Where you ride a guy off and say, well, they, they pit, they give up the stage points, and then they show up. In a place like yeah. Daytona, they rally late in the stage, last couple of laps, maybe the last lap and they find their way into the top ten. Josh? Yeah, let's get an update on the seven of Justin Allgaier. The debate was whether to come in or stay out for a while. They left the decision up to Justin Allgaier, who said ultimately that they should come in, and uh, they made left side tire changes a few adjustments as well, guys. Josh Riley Herbst in the 98 car. There was no decision needed to be made there. They were running 18th, decided to go ahead and pin now, make some adjustments and feel that car a little bit too loose with the back on entry, needed to tighten that up. That means the back tires were sliding. They didn't have the grip that he won. And the 21 of Austin Hill, there was a little bit of a debate. Austin felt like if they pitted, he could get back up through the field because his car was that good. Ultimately, they decided to stay out. He's a little bit loose right now as well, in particular in the wake of other cars. 
you know what's getting ready to get serious is when this stage ends and our, our rookie that's been on the pole and led all these laps, we're going to put him back in the pack. Yeah, we'll see what he can do. He's coming through the traffic now. He's going to learn a, a great deal, a great lesson here when we get ready to go back racing. Yeah, he's led 26 laps, and that's the most laps that a rookie in his debut has ever led since Kurt Busch did in his debut when he led 70 laps at Texas and actually ended up the winner. Now, keep in mind, he was a cup driver when he did that. Cup champion. Cup champion. Now, now you haven't been in the booth for a while. You forgot your tie, but you did bring the stat book, I, I no, see. So I got my good. fat guys. Here. Same guy. It's the same guy that are up here. <laughs> they hand it to you because you can read, you know that? They're that's still celebrating down there, Michael. That's what it's all about right there. You will you might see him here in the morning still celebrating. Celebrate that the rest of your life. What an odd circumstance to win the 500, and as you celebrate, a race is going on behind you, right? Congratulations to William Byron. Congratulations to Hendrick Motorsports wow. on their 40th anniversary. 40 years ago today is when they got things going at HMS, and they come back here over 300 wins all time and another victory in the great American race. Yeah, and I heard William say his dad was a little under the weather, so we want to give a shout-out to Bill Byron. Bill's a buddy of ours. We play golf together, and uh, certainly wonderful family. Hope Bill's doing all right. Doing the choose, we'll have our restart, ending stage one with two laps to go. Spring football is about to hit a whole new level as the USFL and the XFL come together to unleash the United Football League. Opening weekend kicks off March 30th on Fox with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions taking on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. The UFL this spring on ABC, ESPN, FS1, and Fox. And you know what, Adam? The Rock says, gentlemen, start your engines today. He's been in Daytona for a couple of days. It's really cool to see The Rock here. I can promise you he never missed a day in the weight room. <laughs> it didn't look like it. I saw him in the infield. I saw him sitting on the pre-race stage yesterday with Jamie McMurray, Kevin Harvick, and Clint Boyer. And, boy, That's a look healthy, at him. healthy man right there. Mm -hmm. I'd let him be the first one off the bus, you know? <laughs> Seems like a good, good guy, though. There's Daniel, or excuse me. Ross Chastain, Daniel's teammate. Look at the Rock signing some autographs. Look at that smile. Just a fun guy to be around. And the fact that he came back today and, and did his job after being here yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he didn't bail out in the rain. He that didn't bail awesome. when we got rained out, did he? All right, Andy. Are the uh, team orders for the whole race? I'm it's saying this is two gonna two gonna pull down in front of the 21. I would I would expect that. Yeah. But the Dipsy Doodle or whatever. Joey O'Gano no, causes something. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's dangerous because if you mess around too much, those that second row can jump on you. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah. I think Joey calls it the okie dokie. Okie dokie. The the okie dokie. I've got to be honest. I, I have tried no the okie dokie last year in the 500 with, with Austin Dillon and Kyle. It didn't work. The okie dokie ended with, oh, no, right? They've added a lap. We'll come back for the restart after you watch this on FS1. So it looks like it's just going to be a one-lap shootout here for Stage 1 when they get back from this commercial break as they've added another lap of caution. Jesse Love, Austin Hill on the front row getting ready for the restart. you got Parker Kligman, Anthony Alfredo, John Hunter Nemechek, and Jim Burton right behind them. Uh, the cars that already ended up hitting pit road, it looks like the top 13 stayed out. Everybody from 14th on back did pit, and again, four cars were collected in that Incident on lap 22. All of them are out of the race. Again, Daniel Suarez, Sam Mayer, Haley Deegan, and Kyle Weatherman are the four. Average race speed, 144 miles per hour here early on. And with this being just a one-lap shootout here on this restart, be interesting to see what happens and now that it's just one lab i don't see austin hill and jesse love working together to go single file i'd be shocked if that is the case i think it's probably going to be better off if they just try to control the pack lane by lane and just see who gets back to the line first i mean by the time they get up to speed the stage is going to come to an end so if they're pushing well enough and the lane that they don't end up crisscrossing to go single file in if they were to just try to jump in front of one another. 
by way of team orders, and they could get leapfrogged. Still got five Chevys up at the front of the field. A lot more Chevys in the Xfinity Series field compared to Toyotas and Fords. So you'll see that throughout most of the season where there's a lot more bow ties maybe in like the top 10 than what there would be any of the other manufacturers as a whole. Content every NASCAR Cup Xfinity and Truck Series race will be streamed right here on the channel for races that don't go to in person. On the road to 5,000 subscribers on the channel. No, Deegan didn't cause the incident. I don't know who, we still don't know exactly who ran into the back of Daniel Suarez initially. Till the Rock to go by NASCAR team would go away. Jeez. A lot of anti-rock fans. I can understand if you're following the storyline basis in WWE. He is a bad guy now. All right, here we go. One lap. Green white checker for stage one. Playoff point on the line. Ten regular season points awarded to the top ten also on the line. A couple cars jumping out quickly. Cole Custer. Nine of Brandon Jones also going to the outside. I'm not sure how many positions they're going to be able to gain, though, considering the fact, again, everybody's going to be just getting up to speed here. May actually end up going backwards. And there was no team orders between Hill and Creed to go side by side, so they're just going to try to control the lanes. We'll see if somebody else maybe pulls out. Three wide in the middle of the pack. All guy are going to break back into the top ten despite pitting. See how many more positions he's going to get going back to the line. Creed almost clear of Hill in the center of three and four, but not quite. And they're still door to door. Off turn four, it's going to be a drag race back to the line between Sheldon Creed and Austin Hill. Sorry, not Sheldon Creed. Jesse Love and Austin Hill. And Sue close the call at the line. But it looks like it's Jesse Love. By seven one thousandths of a second, Jesse Love is going to win stage one after starting on the pole at Daytona. Dominating the first stage. I really couldn't tell at the line who got it. I said Sheldon Creed, by the way, a couple times there. Sorry for that. Same paint scheme. Creed, obviously, in that two-car last year. Jesse Love, rookie, making his Spinity Series debut, nonetheless, here today with RCR. Seven one-thousandths of a second. Jesse Love will win stage one over Austin Hill. Hill ends up second. Parker Kligerman third. Anthony Alfredo fourth. Jeb Burton fifth. Sheldon Creed 6th, John Hunter Nemechek 7th, A.J. Allmendinger 8th, Justin Allgaier ninth, and Ryan Truex rounds out the top 10 in stage number 1. Playoff point for Love, assuming he qualifies for the playoffs this season. I will say Sheldon Creed did not qualify for the playoffs in his rookie season in that two-car at RCR, so it's not a guarantee necessarily. Yep, Love is a rookie. Arca champ last season. It's Jesse Love. Yeah, sorry for that, by the way. Saying Sheldon Creed there on the final lap. Good thing it wasn't the final lap of the actual race. I didn't ruin the call completely. JBX, 30,001. Thanks for tuning in. Regine Huddleston. Mark DeMars. Matthew Dorda Bruno. Jeff Curry. Thanks for tuning in. Sunshine Cool Water, thanks for watching as well. Many others, just over 100 concurrent viewers watching. And 63 likes already on the stream, appreciate it everybody. Try to get to 5,000 subscribers here before long. We'll have pit stops for those that did not hit pit road during the stage break. There were 13 cars that stayed out. 13 will come down, get fuel only. While we're waiting on that, we'll go through the streaming schedule for next week on the channel. And I'll look at the Atlanta schedule. NASCAR Truck Xfinity and Cup Series action next week. A very busy Saturday of action on the channel, I will say. No practice for the NASCAR Cup Series next week. Uh, no practice actually for any of the three series for next week. So 
again, I will be streaming Cup Series practice and qualifying going forward the rest of the season, but no practice next week. So qualifying at 11.30 a.m. 11.30 a.m. next Saturday will be our next live commentary stream, and it will be qualifying for the NASCAR Cup Series, followed by the Truck Series race at 2 p.m. for the FR8208 at Atlanta. And at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the Raptor King of Tough 250, the NASCAR Xfinity Series race coverage. Sunday, Cup Series, 2.30 Eastern Time. We'll go live with our pre-race coverage of the Ambetter Health 400 in back-to-back -back Super Speedway races to kickstart the NASCAR season. Once again, a reminder, triple header next Saturday, 11.30, qualifying for the Cup Series, followed by the Truck Series race at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And 5 p.m. Eastern Time as well for the Xfinity Series on the channel. And Better Health 400 will be the NASCAR Cup Series title sponsor. That race we will go live at 2.30 next Sunday. No rain in the forecast for next week at Atlanta, at least as of right now. Obviously, that could change between now and then, but looks a lot better. Six days, five to six days before race days in Hampton, Georgia, compared to what we had at Daytona for Saturday and Sunday this week. Which is good. Good for NASCAR. I'm sure their ratings have tanked just as much as me the first two weeks with the Clash and <laughs> the 500 getting moved from its original date. Get uh, back to basics again starting next week, hopefully. Crash Atlanta. Yeah, you're giving the Truck Series no practice after they just put on what they did on last Friday. Good luck. There's going to be so many drivers driving that track for the first time, and they're not gonna, they're not even going to be ready for what's to come. Show diecast for Xfinity. Um, uh, I I'm sorry, I didn't get to the diecast showing for the 500. I do need to bring that back. I haven't done it at all yet for a live commentary stream yet this year. I just don't I don't have any like at the ready. Like I'd have to go digging through my closet to find one right now. I usually have them at the start of the stream, and I didn't even think about it. To be completely honest. Pit road is open this time, and the leaders are on their way in. Parker Kligerman had a great first stage. Felt like he just needed a little bit more push and he could have got the job done. Otherwise, the car has been good for him. And the 21 of Austin Hill, they're going to stop him a little bit short with other cars coming around and going to tighten him up just a little bit right now, finally. Josh. 27 of Jeff Burton, happy with his car so far. A Super Speedway winner last season, looking to add another one to his resume. And the two of Jesse Love, how about this debut, has led the most laps, a stage winner. Happy with that car as well. And you heard him talking about the speed they got with that car ready, guys. Mixed bag on strategy. Some drivers going with two, others going with four. Tire fall off in this Xfinity Series race, I would say, and most Xfinity races compared to the Cup Series with the way the uh, rules package slash just the overall race car is. Uh, the tire itself leads to more tire fall off, but we did see a little over a second of fall off uh, from that first stage over the course of roughly 23 green flag laps, I think, were ran. Kosh came out at lap 22. We had one lap dash, so yeah, 23 green flag laps. Fastest laps in the mid 47s, and we saw them in the mid to high 48s there before lap 22's yellow. Waiting to see exactly who the race leader is going to be. Our leaderboard will refresh when the race leader gets back to the start finish line this time by. Eighty-seven more laps of coverage here during speed weeks. It's been a longer weekend than we all anticipated, but just I mean, not having any stream Saturday, Sunday, but then streaming Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday is really weird. Let me tell you. <laughs> it has thrown my whole weekend schedule in for an entire loop. You know, I try to predict uh you know, or give you guys a schedule. Obviously, it's always subject to change when rain is in the matter. And 
Not to mention the ARCA race was supposed to be Saturday and moved up Friday. Went from thinking the stream was going to be over Friday night after the truck race to, oh yeah, we got an ARCA race to commentate. <laughs> the one time a year I do ARCA at Daytona, but stayed committed to it. And we were streaming till, it's not going to be nearly that late tonight, but uh, 1.45 in the morning was the time that that stream came to an end. 1.45 in the morning, my time. Luckily, I was off of work that day, so it wasn't, like, tired. And I didn't have to go in the next day. Tomorrow's a different story. I do have to go in tomorrow. I'll have a late arrival and be clocking in right at 8 o'clock. A.J. Allmendinger, by the way, will be the leader on the restart, followed by Justin Allgaier, Riley Herbst, Shane Van Gisbergen, Cole Custer, Blaine Perkins, Daniel Dye, Brandon Jones, Ryan Sieg, and Sage Karam are all going to be in the top 10 on this ensuing restart. You might be tired after this. I, I honestly do feel really good right now. I think being up way later on a Friday night has semi-prepared me for tonight. Even though that was three days ago now already. Crazy. But at least with having a Monday race, I mean, we're that much closer to next NASCAR race weekend. <laughs> like I mentioned, our next live commentary stream will be Saturday, just five days from now. NASCAR Cup Series qualifying again, 1130 Eastern next Saturday will be the last next live commentary stream and i'll uh make sure every tuesday to upload that uh weekly streaming schedule for you guys so sometime tomorrow I'll upload it we already went through the start times here tonight uh but i'll do that again before the end of the stream and then sometime tomorrow like on my lunch break or something at work i'll uh, try to make sure i post either then or when i get home one or the other all right back to racing green flag in the air lap 36 following the stage one break which was our second caution of the night. 98, giving a push to the back of the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger, and the guy who finished fifth in the Daytona 500 is now leading for the first time in this NASCAR Xfinity Series race today, and he did lead laps in the 500 as well at one point. Actually, middle of that final stage, it was him and his teammate Daniel Hemrick running 1-2 there for a minute. Before the Fords in that third lane on the outside were able to work the way back to the front and took control of things until, unfortunately... A wreck took most of them out of the race. Byron Hendrick Motorsports was able to go to victory lane. A little bit of three wide action going on now for really the first time in this one. Back half of the top ten and just outside the top ten is Justin Allgaier who leads the first green flag lap of stage two. Cole Custer getting a big push. Him and his teammate Riley Herbst going nose to tail. And up the middle goes Cole Custer for the lead. His teammate Riley Herbst couldn't follow him, and now we're 3x3 three three all the way through about the top half of the field, and Sheldon Cree gets turned in the middle of the pack on the back straightaway. Allmendinger's in it. John Hunter Nemechek, Austin Hill, the favorite, is going for a slide. The two, it looked like the two got hooked. Had to wait to see a replay of this. It looked like the two car got right hooked, came right back across the racetrack, and took out a lot of heavy favorites in this race. But if you were to make a list pre-race of contenders for the win, a whole bunch of them caught up right there. Yep. Well, the move to the middle was 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 too risky. Yeah, this is not good. Yeah, it was too risky this early. He made it look smooth, but when yeah, he got there, in, he like got, it, he got yeah. stuck. Have to see if he got a little contact or why it went around, but putting your car in the middle's a tough place to be. Let's see if we can see if there's contact or what exactly happens. See the third car back in this in the center. The two. It's like a bad bad push from the twenty. Contact from behind, and it went wrong right there. Was that John Hunter? That looked like John Hunter. Yeah, just just a little bit too much of a push. Yeah, they're trying to make that center lane surge, and they almost have to be touching each other. You know, bump drafted so they can make that happen. And uh, 
and it just the cars are not quite stable enough for that. Look okay. at that simultaneous slide from yeah. 20 and 21, and Austin did a really good job of righting the ship and hanging on yeah. to it. He's got damage, but it could have been a whole lot worse. I think Hill's going to be able to continue, honestly. Just a, a lot of wind in the middle of that racetrack when you're uh, you're the center of three wide. Your car's getting buffeted from both directions, and if you get any little bit too aggressive with the steering wheel, you'll get behind and you're steering in a hurry. This should be wild. We're going to hop on board with Austin Hill as he slides through the grass. I don't think any damage to that car. Yeah, it's hard to believe. I don't see any. Also saw Sammy Smith driving through the grass. This is the Bennett Transportation on board the hammer. Yeah, he did get some damage. Yeah, he probably did get some damage from that. Right front. He had to like his spirit, though. He saw him starting to get sideways and saw that open track ahead and was able to just gun it, but... Unfortunately, John Hunter came down. Watch Austin. And listen. The audio would make you think the car the is total. destroyed. Yeah. And there, look, it's anything but destroyed. Yeah, this side looks pretty good. I think that right front's going to show a little damage, though. Mark Kligerman, a quasi-teammate, running for Big Machine. This is his style of racing, so good in the grab. Major disappointment for them after a great qualifying run. Yeah, that's the one tool you want to leave in the toolbox. You don't want to be using it. <laughs> that would be the power saw that Andy Petrie's Take talking about. Underneath the check. Nearly won here a season ago, and... There's the five of Anthony Alfredo. Look at that list of cars involved. A lot of those guys, Regan, we see on that list, we had circled for potential winners. Adam, that's right. You see one of the cars on pit road still right now, the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. A little miscommunication. They didn't have enough damage to where they felt like they had to stay here. They thought they could get back around. They didn't find out the pace car was as close as it was to the end of pit road till it was too late. So now they're parked here. They're going to lose a lap and go ahead and fix it right now and fix it right. But you, you lose lap this early. There's going to be more cautions. We know we'll get one at the end of stage two. So chances are at some point you'll find your way back on the lead lap via the free pass. All these teams have six minutes to work on their car when it comes to the damaged vehicle policy. And if you can't get it repaired in that period of time, you will be done for the night. Such a strong start to this race for Anthony Alfredo and all the damage there. I just go back to the penalty. So yeah. you have to restart in the back. And, and if you hadn't had the penalty, maybe, maybe you'd have been ahead of all that. Yep. Get caught up in it. Justin Allgaier leading at Daytona under caution for the third time tonight. It's our second crash. Got started middle of the pack. And one of the victims, our pole setter, the rookie, Jesse Love. Cars involved in the incident in total uh, looks like a seven-car incident on the back straightaway. Austin Hill, A.J. Allmendinger, Shane Van Gisbergen, Parker Kligerman, Jesse Love, John Hunter Nemechek, and Daniel Dye were all collected. Uh, the cars that are out of the race more than likely from this accident would include Parker Kligerman, John Hunter Nemechek, and it seems to be about it. Josh Williams might have gotten a piece of the incident, too, because he has scored two laps down. Uh, Frankie Muniz, maybe, as well, also two laps down, which is the same amount as... I should say one less than Kligerman. John Hunter Nemechek has scored one lap down. Anthony Alfredo also had damage from that accident. It did not... Show him on the list of drivers involved. But Anthony Alfredo on the five car had quite a substantial amount of damage to the left rear of his race car. Shane Van Gisbergen still scored on the lead lap. Same with Alfredo. There wasn't. It didn't look like there was as much damage on the 97, even though it did look like he had gotten pinched in the wall pretty good. 
So hopefully SVG can continue. He was involved in that early wreck on lap four of the ARCA race. A big wreck happened in front of him. So this is really his first overall race experience this weekend at Daytona. Consider the lack of on-track activity that he ended up having on Saturday. Or, well, Friday night, I should say. Friday night into Saturday morning. <laughs> Essentially. I don't know how many pages of notes I have printed off. I've got... I think I gotta go through this. This is all for Daytona through Speed Weeks. Every race. Got everything I need right here. One, two. Yeah, six. It won't be that big going forward. I don't think we're not gonna have as many streams throughout the course of the uh, weekend. I'll probably have one for each series uh, going forward. But yeah, double down on that. We got a six. It's not front and back, it's just front on every page, but. Thick. Mainly for all the pre race stuff. And mainly all for the Daytona 500 between qualifying Wednesday, the duels, and then uh, the 500 today took up a lot of it. A little bit though for the truck and Xfinity side. Yep. There's Sheldon Creed and Austin Hill. That was last year. Now we got Jesse Love and Austin. A 29 and a 19 year old for the banana go sliding off the track. You got all that, Michael? I, I do. I like the changes that um, RCR made because I can keep up with that. <laughs> because there were two and only <laughs> yeah. one left. One, one change. I'm down with that. The other stuff was confusing. Regan? That was just to update the 21 of Austin Hill on pit road again for the second time, working on some repairs, a little bit of right front damage, had to raise the splitter up just a little bit, it got knocked down. The biggest problem though, the grill got filled up with grass, they were able to take a blower, get that cleaned out, the team just told me everything's good now. Still over 25 cars on the lead lap, after we cleaned up the crash and several have been to pit road. You mentioned Josh Williams getting this opportunity with Colleg, he just got pushed back behind the wall, so um, unfortunately for Josh, he's out of the race. Think about the night for Colleague. We had Suarez, who was caught up in the crash. You just mentioned Josh Williams. Shane Van Gisbergen got some of the action on that crash. Daniel Dye, so did A.J. Allmendinger. So they've been banged up in the early portion of this race tonight. Looks like Frankie Munoz got squeezed in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Get in a place that wasn't there. A little bit damaged. You don't have to go to the garage. Frankie, one of those drivers making his Xfinity debut here tonight. Now we look at our Toyota top performers. Five Toyotas in the race tonight, led by Chandler Smith. Haven't talked a whole lot about him. One last season is a rookie driving for Colin. Did that in Richmond and leading the way. Mike Sage Karen coming from the back with an engine change, driving the 26 for Sam Hunt Racing. How impressive was that drive at Richmond for Chandler Smith? I mean, he just, on the short track, whooped him. And he has a lot of talent. It's been fun to see him get great opportunities. He's back in the Toyota camp. After last year being a Chevy driver at Colic, prior to that driving for Kyle Busch in the Craftsman Truck Series. Here's his bio, just a reminder of who he is. And I, I would say he's a kid, and, and by age he is, but gosh, he's married. He's got two children of his own, started racing at a very young age. So good when it came to ARCA competition, nine wins there mentioned his time at KBM, five truck victories for Kyle, and then last year winning at Richmond. One of our great rookies in 2023 made the playoffs. Yeah, his star is rising for sure. I, I think he's got a, a ton of uh, a potential. Or can I make a bad decision there? What do you think happened there? Uh, John Hunter Nemechek happened to you. He'll learn that lesson the hard way. That's part of the deal. I haven't seen it from head on yet, but him behind us, I knew it was a bad situation to begin with. Before, well, dang. Uh, I just thought I got an off center push. A ton of damage for the two of Jesse Love to fix. He had to come back down to pit road. He was concerned about being on the, on the splitter. You saw all the damage to the right front. They took a round out of the right rear, but still some concern for Jesse Love after such a strong start to this race, guys. You know, Andy, when he dove up into the middle, did Jesse Love, I, he did it so smoothly. I thought that was a nice move. 
but then he just got he's a real rookie in the series he just don't want to be in that position especially at this point in the race uh, no he didn't call the wreck uh, but he was in a really bad spot and, and he put himself in a yeah. bad spot but you live and you learn Close you got to learn the hard way. Good news for him. One stage one got ten yeah, stage points. That'll help. help minimize the damage at the end of the night. About halfway home in stage two, front row for the restart. All Geyer and Cole Custer. Riley Herbst in the 98, giving a big shove to All Geyer. I give him the most aggressive award for the start of this race. He's pushed anything he can and tried to get down low. He's been all over the place trying to make things happen. Got his teammate right up there with him now. Custer on the bottom. Custer on oh, the top. That was pretty <laughs> aggressive move right there. Not done yet. Nope. I don't think that all guy can win. He can't block both of them. They go three wide, outside Herbst, inside Custer, put the double zero on point at Daytona. They play the perfect, play perfect yeah. machine trying to get up into the lead. Digging on the bottom. How close that side drafting is. You can block two lanes, but can you block three coming from behind? Custer's got a whole lot going on in his rear view mirror right now. Custer's experience, our champion, as you talked about, he knows how to manage the situation. Try to slide up high, get that high line lined up again like they had early and log some laps. That's what this is all about. See the 32 there of Jordan Anderson pushing into the back of Sage Carroll. That was a very oh. aggressive push. They lucky to get away with that. Oh, that was so close. Yeah. Have to ease up on that. Look at some of the names in the top ten. We talk about Blaine Perkins, Ryan Sieg's up there. You guys touched on Sage Karen, Parker Retzlaw. Brandon Jones needs a good run after a disappointing 2023. I don't uh, This is a lot. It's a lot to run three wide around this racetrack. We saw the Cup guys do it lap after lap. Finally bit them. You can do it for a while. You just can't do it all day. This is really early in the race to be three wide. Allgaier shoots through on the inside. He's side by side with Custer now. Retzloff in the middle. Somebody shoots out of line. I think Allgaier. It is Allgaier. I thought he... I saw smoke. I couldn't figure out what happened. Oh, and here comes... Smoke off right there. there. Got off the there. Though. Smithley in the six. I think he tried to side draft and just slid up too high. Nice and easy. You got a lot of time. A lot of time. It's Jim Pullman, the crew chief on the radio. He sees that left rear tire flat. He doesn't want to cause any more damage. Caution number four comes out with Justin Allgaier running up front. He went for a, a wild one here. Oh, yeah. He just tried to get up, be aggressive with that side draft, and it just it carried him up there just quicker than he thought. I think so. Yeah. Good job, though, controlling that car, spinning it around and keeping it off that inside wall. Do you expect these veterans like Allgaier to, to you know, make better decisions? We're only 40, what, 45 laps into a you know, 100-lap race, 120-lap race. Not the time to be that, that aggressive with that move. That thing jumped up there awful quick, though, didn't it? We have an early candidate for the save of the night, I'll tell you. I like Pretty it. good. And last summer we came here, and Allgaier got his first Daytona win. And he did so in convincing fashion, beating Sheldon Creed by... Five thousand of <laughs> I wouldn't count him out tonight either. No way. Let's listen to double zero team audio here. There was a piece of debris up high off two, and I had to try and dodge it. I think it's expected to be a mile wall, but there is a piece of debris up there. Copy, I'll tell him. So it looks like maybe Cole Custer made a little bit of a move towards the seven while he was trying to come up there and side drag. Allgaier makes a pit stop. He'll reset at the tail of the field. Custer, Herbst, Chandler Smith, Retzloff, Aram, the top five, halfway home at stage two. All right, under caution, once again in this NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Daytona. 
Four yellows already in the first 45 laps of the race. That's one short of what we had in the entire 500 miles of the Daytona 500 earlier today. If you were uh, wondering why you were hearing more of the race broadcast there, it was getting a little, little uh, snack here. <laughs> I don't have any sponsors for the channel, but uh, it looks like uh, Cheez-It will be sponsoring us through the rest of the night. I didn't get much to eat in between races. I only had like 40 minutes in between streams, so there wasn't really a lot uh, to be able to eat. I think it was a little less than that. The original. Got a family size box here. I barely made a dent into it. I know I'm definitely going to be eating again after the stream before I actually go to bed. Even though I have to work tomorrow, I'm <laughs> still on the hungry side right now. Hunger has not been quenched. No, that's my sister. <laughs> I think I think we've been over this. That was last year too. We've been over this. So under caution, Justin Allgaier going for a spin. While contending for the race lead, leading laps there not long before that spin had taken place. Be too aggressive of a side draft, made contact with race leader Cole Custer around he went. The sixth car was also involved, Garrett Smithley. Not that much damage on his car either. And I almost think he might have spun to miss the incident, or he got spun with everybody checking up. They added more cars to what was initially an 11 car incident on lap 36 at first track here in stage 2 and now it has been moved to an 11 car incident as they did not have Jeremy Clements and Frankie Muniz on that list. Muniz had pulled to the garage. He will not continue. Uh, Josh Williams also collected in that incident. In his DNF as a result. Surprised that Parker Kligerman's still in the race, but he is two laps down. Free pass, by the way, had just gone to Daniel Dye, who was also involved in that wreck. And Shane Van Gisbergen, who was also involved in the incident, is still scored one lap down in 31st, but we know we're guaranteed at least one more caution with the stage two break, whenever that may be. You know that that debris that Custer talked about. We didn't see that in the first replay, but you can see it laying on the racetrack right there. And watch the just gentle, subtle move Cole makes to get away from the debris. And at the same were, time, Allgaier was coming up to side draft. And they just, uh, they were zigging when they should have been zagging. That's just yeah. an unfortunate situation for Allgaier. That's what caught Allgaier off guard, I think, was that he didn't expect for Custer to be moving off the wall at that point. Zigging instead of zagging, that's different than the okie dokie on the receiver. Yeah, totally. uh, they're similar though. <laughs> they're in the same family. Yes. By the way, John Hunter Nemechek involved in that crash a while ago. Gets the free pass and here with our fourth caution, so he's back in the game. It looks like they've got that car taped up pretty good, Adam. I believe he's going to be competitive. There's the 20 for yeah, John Hunter. Lisa. 30 cars on the lead lap. So we, Jesse Love back on good road. Yeah, we need a couple more pieces for Jesse's Yeah, I'm afraid Jesse's not quite as lucky. How about Parker Retzloff? Right there on the front row. Sage Karen, Blaine Perkins, Jordan Anderson, Jeremy Clements, Ryan Sieg, all in the top ten for the restart. I do love Daytona. You get to see these guys that maybe don't quite have the budget to run good at every racetrack. But the air, the draft, is a great equalizer. It pulls them together. And they're able to show that they have the talent to get it done on these big tracks. Jordan Anderson racing, always good when we go to Daytona or Talladega. All three of their cars top 15 here a year ago. And the boss man running tonight. He's seventh on the restart. Custer. 12 laps to go in stage two as the green flag is back in the air for Cole Custer and Parker Retzlaff on the front row. Consistently through the Daytona 500 truck race and here, even in this Xfinity race, seeing the outside of the front row be taken by the control car on the restarts. 
Although this time for Cole Custer doesn't work out too well, didn't get enough help, and Parker Rutzlaff is going to lead the way. Two Jordan Anderson racing Chevys at the front. You got Rutzlaff and then Jeb Burton in the 27, who had won at Talladega last season. Is also in the mix. And Burton goes way down to block the 51 of Jeremy Clements. And that is going to leave his teammate Rutzlaff in the middle. Not great uh, teamwork necessarily right there. Rutzlaff is going backwards if he can't get any help. Clements thought about pulling into that hole and Burton still blocking aggressively on Jeremy Clements. And now Clements is going to get shuffled into the middle of the groove and he's going to go backwards. There's two cars in the middle. I'm curious to see if anybody maybe is going to try to jump into the middle groove with those two cars. Rutzlaff found his way in the bottom groove as there's only six cars down there right now. About to be seven. Once the 51 is able to find himself down to the double yellow line in line behind Retzlaff. And Austin Hill, who was involved in that spin at lap 36, just 13 laps later, is up to second. That's how good he is at Daytona and Talladega. And Atlanta, the new Atlanta as well. He is able to make moves all on his own. Got one spinner, middle of the tri-oval. John Hunter Nemechek, he's coming back across the racetrack. And two cars ended up getting ran into... Not by Nemechek necessarily, but in the aftermath of trying to spin to avoid Nemechek. Looked like the 92 car went for a slide. The front end of his Camaro ended up digging into the grass on the front stretch and tore the entire splitter off of it. It was Josh Balicki in the 92 it looks like a flat lefter tire on Nemechek's race car, which caused him to spin all on his own in the center of the tri-oval. And this is our fifth clash of the race, already matching today's Daytona 500. Yep. Looks there like he goes, the left right rear there. tire. Yep. He did a pretty good job not to do any more damage to the car. Wow. Got lucky, too. Oh, and just contact there into the back of the 92. Nemechek involved in that earlier crash we talked about the fact he got a lap down was able to get back on the lead lap via the free pass running 17th when he had the tire go down and now we're under caution again one thing they're going to have to do here is make sure that the, the damage is cleared from that left rear don't have that many sets of tires to, uh, to work with here in the Xfinity Series got four sets for the weekend and you use them for practice qualifying and the race and, and fortunately you don't have to put a lot of tires on during the race but you start making a, a bunch Unless of you do stops this. because of damage <laughs> and accidents like this all of a sudden you can have a shortage there's josh balicki limping his way back to the pit john hunter doing the same yeah, right front's down too now but that i think that was after the fact result of the spin dawson cram in the four also got a piece of that crash Nine laps to go. Stage two, Jeb Burton showing the way. Austin Hill, Ryan Sieg, Sammy Smith, Cole Custer up front. It's Monday night NASCAR from Daytona. Well, there you have it. A couple Chevys at the front. Jeb Burton and Austin Hill. And I will say Hill's going to be uh, the favorite, I think, to win, especially with quite a few strong cars getting taken out in the earlier incident. Uh, not to mention, again, Austin Hill was in that wreck. I don't think we've seen the last of Justin Allgaier either, who had spun battling for the lead. No major damage on his race car, and he's back up to 16. 29 cars on the lead lap. That counts John Hunter Nemechek, who was just involved in this incident. And he uh, ended up with a top 10 finish in the Daytona 500. Oops. Had to close out of that. There we go. Got 73 likes on the stream. Zavi Dayro Racer, thanks for tuning in. Jeb Burton leads. Both of his Xfinity wins have come at Talladega. 
In fact, oddly enough, the only two Xfinity races at Talladega I've ever watched, Jim Burton won them both. Last season and uh, 2021, Rain Shorten race. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing one. Uh, AJ Allmendinger, I think, also had another one. The only two spring Talladega races for the Xfinity Series I saw, Jeb Burton won. Should clarify that. The other Xfinity race I saw would have been a fall race, playoff race. And AJ Allmendinger ended up winning that one. Last lap pass. Photo finish at the line. That would have been 2022. Same weekend, Chase Elliott ended up barely beating Ryan Blaney for the win in the Fall Dega race for the Cup Series. Here, Henry said he was fine. Who was that? Uh, talk about Ryan Blaney, I take it. Yeah, a couple of hard hits this weekend. He was checked to release from the care center. Actually spoke with him during that red flag period, as well as Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, who were also involved in that incident with eight laps to go in the Daytona 500. Supra pace car. And a pace car driver getting a bit of a workout tonight with five of laps already. I hope they have a new pace car driver from Friday night because we wore him out. We did. <laughs> a record 12 cautions. <laughs> hey, let's take a minute and salute all the men and women that make NASCAR on Fox happen. These guys are heroes. The, the, this week has been outrageous because of all the rain and the long days and nights, and we thought this race was going to happen this morning at 11. So everybody came in to get everything set up and ready. It rains, and now we're racing up to midnight. It's remarkable what they do week to week. Everything they dealt with out in Los Angeles when it comes to the clash and all the rain there, the setup, the takedown, and everyone, most of our crew is going to leave here and go straight to Atlanta because we're racing on Monday night and didn't get the activities in yesterday. They sacrificed their time away from their families so we can have great coverage. We thank you all and a special shout out to Karen Fazing, who is at home tonight, one of the great leaders in our television compound. I tell you, when you walk in that television compound, you would know that these guys have put in a 12, 16-hour day. Smiles, happy, thankful to be back on the job, thankful to be in Daytona and doing what we love to do. I was in the garage today, and I had two or three crew members from the Xfinity Series come to me and say, hey, tell everybody thank you, because we know what these days are like, and everybody is committed. Let them know how much we appreciate it. Yeah, I tell you, everybody in the garage area appreciates the job. That's done and the shots that you get. I mean, this amazing, you know, TV coverage that we get. You get, you don't hardly miss anything on the track. Good view for Jeb Burton with that Golden Corral onboard camera. And right behind him, Austin Hill having another productive night at Daytona. Back in this employee. Dude, that thing gets a run. Holy. Dude, one and two, that was bad. Dude, you look like you're having some fun out there. <laughs> it was fun to watch, Austin. Is that Derek Nealon? That's Derek Nealon. He's a spotter. He's a, I'm telling you, he's a, he, he's a hero spotter. And Andy Street, crew chief. Was he and Andy Street, crew chief? This is a good good group right here. They're a fun bunch of people to be around. I'm back, he said. <laughs> Andy's back, too. We're glad you're here. I'm back. We'll go green when we come back. All right. Like the caution here. I'm not sure exactly why, considering it was just a two-car spin. Maybe there was more debris in the racetrack than what they initially stated. Obviously, there was a piece of debris that they had missed off of turn two, which caused the Justin Allgaier incident right off of turn two. Probably just making sure that they got everything picked up this time. And obviously, John Hunter Nemechek having a left rear tire go flat. Maybe he ran over a piece of debris. It was either that or it didn't get the fender pulled out enough from that left rear tire from the incident he was involved in on lap 36. 
Otherwise, it'd be pretty weird for a left rear to go flat of all tires. Could have had contact, too, I guess. Never caught at least a replay of any cameras that indicated that there was contact made. I'm not tired mentally, I will say, but physically, just sitting in a chair all day. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, uh, or on a chair. It's more of a stool, sitting on a stool for going on nearly seven hours. That's a, uh, not a comfortable place to sit. Be sleeping easy tonight. I'm sure, many of you will also. Again, thank you for everybody that is still watching and has been watching this live commentary coverage of the United Rentals 300 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Coming down to it. Nearly halfway home in this NASCAR Xfinity Series race. And again, we're under our fifth caution of the day. Not going to have many laps left in stage two when we get back to racing. And a one lap dash at the end of stage one. And it's going to be anywhere between five or less laps left in stage two. By the time we get back to green as well. Racing for the 65th time tonight here at the World Center of Racing, and it doesn't matter when you come here. If there's competition on track, four to go on the restart. Beautiful racetrack, especially at night. And it just never gets old. When when it comes time to head to Daytona, Andy, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it takes me back to my childhood when I came through that tunnel the first time and come to this racetrack. I, I still get that feeling. I do too. When and I come in here, other drivers and crew guys are like, yes, that's exactly what happens to me, Mike. It's amazing. Nothing like Daytona. I was disappointed when we didn't get to run this morning at 11 o'clock. It's been a long week here, no doubt about it. But the reality is, it was no problem to get fired up, to <laughs> jump up in the booth and do this race, even though we're doing a little Xfinity after dark, Regan. Adam, the 26th of Sage Karam, having a good run to start this night off here. Keep in mind, he's actually finished fifth at Daytona in his only three-year start back in 2022. Right now, quite on the radio, it's been a lot of the spotter teaching him who to get with on the racetrack, who he needs to be trying to draft with, and who to learn from while he's out there right now. He has been impressive, no doubt about it. Just got a report, uh, Dawson Cram was released from the infield care center. He was involved in that last accident. Austin's a good kid, getting to drive for JD Motorsports full time. That's right. So Austin Hill lined up on the front row. He's got all that tape on the nose. He's been able to draft his way all the way to the front, at least to second. You're, if he gets a lead, let's just see how good it, how you know how how aerodynamic it is. I was going to ask your expertise, Andy. Is that car capable of pulling this field around here? Is it aerodynamically sound? Can I get back to you here about a lap? <laughs> Had a one lap shootout to end stage one. Going to be four to go when we return to the green flag here in stage two. A pair of Chevys in the front row, Jeff Burton and Austin Hill. All right, green flag back in the air. Again, four laps left, stage two. Jeff Burton, the control car, again, on the outside lane. The outside faded on the last restart. And we have the eight car of Sammy Smith at a new home. Junior Motorsports, he's the one pushing the 21. Same pilot flying J paint scheme for the 8. We'll be seeing that throughout more than likely most of this Xfinity season for him. Didn't take long for them to get the 3 wide on the back straightaway once again, as we've seen for a large portion of this race. Sheldon Creed, who is in the 18, which was Sammy Smith's last ride, is now up in contention. And they're 3x3 three three all the way through this field from about second on back. 
Austin Hill is going to be the lone man at the front of the field trying to control every line. Contact, it looked like, between Sheldon Creed and Sammy Smith. That was an aggressive side draft, to say the least. I do think they made slight bit of contact in the middle of the tri-oval. Hill's car is bottoming out. Middle of the corner. Call that a low rider. Hill up to block the outside, back to the bottom. Didn't come completely off the bottom. Not enough for the eight to get underneath because you can't pass below that double yellow line. He's deemed out of bounds. Two to go this time by in stage two. Well, they make it back without another incident. Hill still clear into turn one. Is on the top lane, back down to the bottom again. Middle of the corner, rides on the double yellow line right in front of the eight. The block Sheldon Creed in the 18. No chance to make the move, though, in the back straightaway this time. And Creed's going to get alongside Hill into turn three, but he can't stay there. And Hill's clear again in the middle of three and four. And Sheldon Creed's going to have to surge again off turn four, and he is. Hill wanted to block, but it was a little too late. Sheldon Creed down to side draft, one lap to go in stage two. A near move up the middle there by the eight car of Sammy Smith. Thought about it. Wasn't enough of a hole to make the move. And he's watching his former ride lead the outside lane again. Ryan Sieg is that second car in the outside groove. He keeps giving Creed some good pushes getting off into the corner. The eight is all over the place getting pushed by Sheldon Creed. And now he carries the, his momentum to the back bumper of the 21. And Hill's clear again in the middle of three and four. Austin Hill get way out ahead as they work their way off turn four. Needed the 18 to side draft just a little bit more with the two, but he's going to be boxed in. And Austin Hill is going to be able to carry home the victory in stage two. So Hill, after a spin early in this stage, still comes back with minimal damage to the right front of his race car. You can see that bear bond taping up the right front fender. Well, it's fast enough to get back to the front Control the pack there for those final three to four laps of the stage. And Austin Hill is going to pick up his first playoff point of 2024. Waiting for our leaderboard to update here. A little bit behind the actual race broadcast. And then we'll go through the rest of the stage results. So there you have it. By nine hundredths of a second, Austin Hill wins stage number one over Sammy Smith. Sheldon Creed third, Cold Custer fourth, Ryan Seek fifth. Ryan Truex sixth, Riley Herb seventh, Justin Allgaier eighth, AJ Allmendinger ninth, and Brandon Jones rounds out the top ten in stage two. Got no die cast showing here for today. I just didn't have it ready to go. Starting next week, I'll I'll do the uh die cast showings once again. Once again, a reminder for next week's live commentary slate. We have a triple header coming up for you guys on Saturday with NASCAR Cup Series qualifying live commentary stream for Atlanta at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Following that, we'll have Truck Series flag-to-flag -flag coverage at Atlanta Motor Speedway as well as their race will kick off at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And then the final of three races next Saturday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series will be at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And then, of course, the main event of the weekend, the NASCAR Cup Series, starting the season off with back-to-back -back super speedway races for the first time in history, as they will be running the Ambitter Health 400. Our live commentary coverage for that race will begin at 2.30 Eastern Time for a 400-mile event at Atlanta again next Sunday. We got four more streams coming up your way next weekend, and you got three Saturday, and the main event, of course, on Sunday. Covering all the on track activity next weekend for the top three series.
well, I guess technically excluding qualifying on Friday for the Truck and Xfinity Series, but any on-track activity Saturday, we'll have it right here for you on the channel as well as Sunday. So sitting at 75 likes, we're 25 likes away from our goal of 100 for this live commentary stream. We hit our goal during the truck race. I think we did get there during the uh, Thursday duels as well, so did not get there for the Daytona 500, unfortunately, today, but a Monday night Xfinity race, if we hit that goal, that will be a good goal to hit here. Should have pit stops coming up very shortly during our Stage 2 break. Not the final pit stop of the day. They will still have to pit for fuel one more time. This will be the second to last stop. So we're down just under 60 to go. 45 to 50 laps on a full tank of gas here. By the time we get going green, it'll be a little over 50 to go. Just a little bit outside of the chance of being able to make it to the end. We get one caution in this final stage, and everybody will be coming down to top off one more time. This will probably be the last set of tires that go on the car for the rest of the race. So, barring anybody that gets into any sort of incident where they have to change tires again, this should be the last set. Jeffrey Giordano, thanks for tuning in. A good night meaning like you're saying good night. Yeah, Starbucks would have been a good stop to just go there and come back. I don't know how late mine would have been open though on a Sunday. I know during the week I think they're man, I don't remember if they close at eight or nine. It might not it might not even be it might be earlier than that they close during the week. They'll be open in the morning though. I might need it on the way to work. Tire field looks to be coming into the pits this time by Pit Road is open. Stage that could eliminate you and take away your finish at the end of the night. So if you can put some points in the bank, that makes life a whole lot better. When you exit Daytona, here's the stage point breakdown. Pit stops in the stage two, Regan. Earlier on, and he slides through his pit box right here. That's going to be a little bit of a problem, cost him some time. Right now, race cars is bottoming out in turns one and two too much. Has trouble taking a push as good as he wants, and Sheldon Creed very good as well. He didn't want any changes. He just needs more help from the pushers that are behind him, Josh. For the eight of Sammy Smith, finishing second in stage number two. Happy with that car set. It was good and stable. No adjustments for them. Moving on to the double zero of Cole Custer. He said he likes the car. If you make any adjustments, make it a little freer, they gave it two right side tires. Thank you, fellas. Whole lot to break down when it comes to those pit stops. We'll set you up for the final stage at Daytona when we come back on FS1. But when I do, uh, I usually get an iced coffee from either uh, McDonald's because there's one like really close to where my work is, or uh, if I get out of here extra early enough i can go into town more before i leave town to go to a different town where i work and uh they have a starbucks here but i, I don't make my own coffee coffee machine here is my sister's I, I i don't i just don't drink it if i do it's got to be iced i'm not one for warm drinks i've never been cold refreshing drinks uh way to go for me up to 80 likes. Let's go. Got five more during this caution. 150 down, 150 miles still to go. Again, a little less than 60 laps left. Jesse Love is out of the race, but he still led the most laps so far. 33 laps led for the pole sitter. And it was actually the first 33 laps of the race. He led the entirety of stage one up until he came to pit road, lost the lead on pit road, and then uh, was caught up in that. Wreck at lap 36, just a few laps after the restart, unfortunately, and that took him out. I'll end up finishing this thing off with a... Looking to see exactly where he's at. Actually, it looks like he's still in the race. Oh, yeah, he is. I thought he was out. My bad. He's actually going to be the leader, it looks like. <laughs> I think he stayed out of the pits. 
I didn't even think he was on the lead lap if he was still in it. Never mind, Jesse Lump's still in it. He's got a lot more damage to the right front of his car, though, than Austin Hill. I don't think he'll be able to pull a line of cars up there. But he is still in it. And because of pitting during the last caution that we had late in Stage 2 and just having a four-lap shootout, he and a few others had hit pit road well before that. And all the drivers that would have pitted during that caution have now cycled to the front. Austin Hill, obviously, a slow stop as he slid through his pit box. So that costed him a little bit of time. Had to back up before they could start fueling it. He has scored 18th after winning stage two. Shout out to Shane Van Gisbergen in the 11th place position right now as well. Solid run in his uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series debut, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he's ran any Xfinity races yet. I could be wrong on that. You'll have to correct me in the chat if you are aware of SVG has ran any Xfinity races, but I believe it'll be his first. Showing a replay of Hill on Pit Road. Yeah, he was speeding all the way down pit road. I think something's wrong with the electronics there. He was going 75 plus miles an hour on pit road. And obviously, not only sped all the way through the pits, but slides through the box on top of it. So the tachometer seems to not be right for Austin Hill because he was speeding all the way into the pits. I mean, that's going to be tough to try to fix. There is still one more pit stop left the rest of this race. And he did come from the back once already to the front. So I don't hesitate that he'll be able to do it again. I think I'm most worried about the fact that he is going to have to pit one more time. And I mean, he was easily 20 plus miles per hour above the uh, pit road speed limit almost all the way in through the piss. Assuming that Fox's graphic on their tachometer was right. Started second, second at the end of stage one, and first at the end of stage two. So most stage points in this race through the first two stages will go to Austin Hill. And we'll see if the favorite can work his way from the back to the front again. Again, I think he can do so. We'll see how quick it'll be. He's in this situation, and less than a stage was able to come back. His final stage will be twice the length of each of the first two stages, or at least the same length as each of the first two stages combined in this one. That whole right front tire is exposed on the two car of Jesse Love. Gets out in the open, up to speed in the air. It's going to be difficult to try to maintain the line. I think whatever line he is going to be in, he may be backing it up a little bit. We'll see how it works for him. We'll have 54 laps to go when we get back to racing. As, again, Jesse Love will be the control car on this restart in his Xfinity Series debut. And Sammy Smith, who was a rookie last season, is going to be on the inside of row one. Pretty good rookie year for Smith, making a deep playoff run as well as getting a win. Tapered off middle to the end of the year, but started off hot, and we'll see if he can start off hot again in 2024. Green flag back in the air. How patient is Brandon Jones going to be trying to push the two? Love did not get going very well off the initial restart. Now getting a massive push into the first turn. Still kind of lagging behind a little bit. The A-car easily clear of both lanes in the middle of turns one and two, and he's getting out ahead. Sheldon Creed is the next car in line right behind Sammy Smith. That's an all-guyer, Cole Custer up on the outside. They're behind Brandon Jones, who is, of course, again, behind Love. In lane number two off the bottom. Jesse Love going backwards a little bit more again. Seems like every corner they come off the exit, he loses one more car. 
And will there be a drastic decision to try to make that move to the outside of Jesse Love by the junior motorsport cars that sit behind him? Again, the teammates of Brandon Jones and Justin Allgaier are there. My phone just died. Got a, I got a backup plan here. Give me one second. Some audio going. Looks like the field is still two by two, fifty one laps to go. And it is still the eight car of Sammy Smith out ahead of the pack. He has fallen outside the top 10 and probably got shuffled out of line into that third groove near the wall where nobody is, if I had to guess. And he was backing those cars up. And once they got a car that wasn't damaged up in the mix, Riley Herbst is starting to lean his way forward. And again, Herbst has Ryan Sieg behind him. Sammy Smith going to jump up into the outside lane and back down to the bottom. A lot of lane controlling going on by the lead car in this Xfinity Series race. Doesn't seem to matter who it is. Allmendinger backing up in that bottom groove and trying to get another run. Outside lane's coming on just as strong as the bottom, though. It's going to be tough for Sammy Smith to hold on to the lead this time. And as they enter into turn three, that would be by. For the top 15 or so cars. And a couple of drivers hanging out a little bit further back, trying to stay out of harm's way. Up to 82 likes on the stream. We're 19 away, or 18 rather, away from our goal of 100. He's an off strong if it's an Xfinity Series regular, and that will lock them up into the playoffs. And even though we had some heavy hitters taken out of this thing earlier, there's still Sammy Smith, Riley Herbst, A.J. Allmendinger, Sheldon Creed, Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones, an abysmal season last year, did not make the playoffs in his first full-time season with Junior Motorsports. Turn two, middle of the back straightaway, cuts all the way down to try to side draft again. I'm not sure if he had a moment there or not. That really slowed that second line off quite a bit. As he tries to work his way forward even more. Side-by-side -side commercial break right now on FS1. Thank you all for listening live on the channel right now. We will take a quick little ad break on our own. Continue our live commentary coverage of the United Rentals 300 on KRC. And last time by at the start finish line, Riley Herbst scored the race leader. Sammy Smith second, Ryan Sieg third, AJ Allmendinger fourth, Brandon Jones fifth, Sheldon Creed sixth, Justin Allgaier seventh, Parker Retzlaff eighth, Cole Custer ninth, Jeb Burton tenth, Daniel Dye eleventh, Chandler Smith twelfth, Blaine Perkins thirteenth, Ryan Truex fourteenth, Sage Karam fifteenth, sixteenth place for Austin Hill, John Hunter Nemechek seventeenth, Jordan Anderson eighteenth, Jeremy Clements nineteenth, and Jesse Love. Will finish, or sorry, is currently running 20th. Leland Honeyman in 21st, Patrick Emerly 22nd, Brennan Poole 23rd, BJ McLeod 24th, Shane Van Gisbergen 25th, Natalie Decker 26th, 27th for Garrett Smithley, Ryan Ellis 28th is the last car in the lead lap. Parker Kligerman still in the race two laps down in 29th, Anthony Alfredo also still in this race with damage three laps down at 30th, and then everybody from 31st on back out of the race today. So eight drivers have already DNF. 
Dawson Crammell finished 31st, Josh Balicki 32nd, Frankie Muniz 33rd, Josh Williams 34th, Daniel Suarez 35th, Sam Mayer 36th, Haley Deegan 37th, and Kyle Weatherman will end up finishing at 38th. So Sammy Smith and Riley Hurst continue to go back and forth for the lead at the front of the field. A couple cars diving onto pit road as the field window may be open to the end of the race right now. Interesting strategy there. Four cars on their way in. And it looks like Austin Hill is one of those cars that are coming into the pits right now. That's an interesting strategy call. You'll have to let me know if you can hear the uh, race audio. Uh, once I unmute it, they're still on a side-by-side -side commercial break for right now. But you'll have to let me know. I'm not going to unmute it unless we see more green flag stops. And we do have a few cars coming in right now. Let me know if you can hear the race audio at all. I don't want to turn it up too loud. It's so far away from the laptop. Let me know if it's clear. But yeah, I don't think it's uh, clear enough from that far away. I don't want to turn it up any louder. I'll just mute it for right now. I'll give you guys uh, the commentary. I'll let you listen in again once I get the phone charged back up again. I'll wait until they come back from the following commercial break. Obviously, not under one right at the moment. Very few cars on the lead lap as we have... Uh, well, actually, quite a few cars still on the lead lap. This giant pack of cars that has already pitted seems to be from 11th place on back. So the top 10 still have to hit pit road. It looks like most of them are actually on their way in right now. Riley Herbst, Cole Custer, and others coming in. Surprise everybody's pitting at the front end of this window, considering that there could be overtime today. Surprise not too many of them wanting to run long. And maybe the speed of uh, the last of the drivers that were still out on the racetrack in the top 10 weren't as high as the giant pack of cars running. So they felt that if they didn't pit soon, they were going to lose too much time. That could have factored in as well. A 
A little bit hard here. Yeah, that's all right. I didn't expect you guys to be able to hear it loud and clear. I tried to put my phone on the charger during the races, but 40 minutes just wasn't enough to I really hardly charge it at all. Natalie Decker, currently the race leader, still has to hit pit road. Same goes for Ryan Ellis and Garrett Smithley. Uh, Ryan Truex, Sheldon Creed, fourth and fifth right now. They'll be the top two in the running order of those that have to pit yet. Uh, Cole Custer, all by himself with Riley Herbst. Giant pack of cars is coming. Now, Sheldon Creed and Ryan Truex are so much further ahead of everybody else, and I don't know if they pitted already or not. They might not have. Looks like Riley Herbst and Cole Custer might be the top two in the running order of those that... Yeah, and they were actually just on pit road. That's what it was. Last lap, they were on pit road. When Natalie Decker crossed the start-finish line. So, Decker, Ellis, Smithley still have to pit. The leading laps here at Daytona. Two and three wide action as they work their way off turn four with this lead pack that is eating alive. The SHR fours that are not that much further in front of them. Creed just getting eaten alive himself by the pack of cars. Rumbling by to the outside. The last time by at the start finish line. Only about a second and a half to two seconds ahead of the pack was Hurst and Custer. And just two cars obviously not going to be anywhere near as fast as the pack of probably 15 plus cars that is coming for them. Ryan Truex at the head of it with a JGR teammate of John Hunter Nemechek right there behind him. Both those cars on the outside. All two by two, and I don't expect for Custer and Herbst to necessarily just back off, let these guys go, and try to fall in line at the back of the draft. I think they're going to do what they can to try to stay in front of them. They're going to move up. Custer moves up. Too big of a run down to the bottom, and they'll train around Cole Custer. And Riley Herbst. Herbst goes down, goes back up, and almost squeezed the 19 into the wall. That's one way to slow him down. Side-drafting the heck out of Ryan Truex, and now they split three wide around him as the 81 car has thrown himself into the mix. That's Chandler Smith in the 81. And he is going to get to the front of this pack. Again, this is a battle for fourth because the top three cars still have to pit. They're still a whole 28 seconds ahead of this lead draft. And to make it to the end of the field run, they could probably get all the way to about 5 to 10 laps, well, probably closer to 10 to 15 laps to go before they have to pit. Considering it's just three cars in that pack, they're not going to be saving much fuel. So they'll be able to ride around for quite some time. Caution comes out, obviously they'll still be in it. Just an alternating strategy. I don't think they have the speed nor the number of cars in their pack. It's so one lapper that's kind of hanging into there as well as the top three themselves. But uh, the lead pack that is racing for the eventual race win has the 81 of Ryan Truex at the front of it. Natalie Decker getting some screen time leading the race. Could you imagine if she goes on to lead the most laps in this race today because of the laps she's leading right now? <laughs> uh, she's led five. Five laps already. She can lead the second most, though. Easily. We haven't seen anybody lead double digit in laps today other than Jesse Love, who's led 35. She's not going to get to that number before she has to pit, but she can definitely get to like 20 laps if she really wants to. I mean, why not? They're probably committed to just running until they can't run anymore, at least until the leaders catch them. And the leaders are only about a second a lap faster, so they're probably not going to catch up for another 20-plus laps anyway. But again, those top three cannot make it on fuel. And this is also a safe place to be running because they're not in this giant pack right now. While, obviously, everybody's running two and three wide, racing for what would be the eventual race win. 
So if something were to happen, they would be out of it. They would be able to pit, top off on fuel. We go overtimes, they know that they're going to be plenty good to the end because they're going to be the latest to pit, and they can put more fuel in their car if they choose. Leland Honeyman ran the ARCA race the other night, and he, at 18 years of age, is up in this lead pack in the 42 car, just outside the top 10 in the running order right now. But in contention, a few drivers from that ARCA race that have ran the truck and Xfinity races. There was actually a couple of drivers that were doing double duty. I think there was a handful of them running both the ARCA and the truck race, which ended up being the same day at Daytona. Again, that took place on Friday night. And they have uh, swapped around now, maybe in an alternative effort to potentially save fuel. And Natalie Decker has dropped out of the lead. She is now in third, still up in that lead pack. And Ryan Ellis now leads at Daytona. So Ryan Ellis, then Garrett Smithley, and Natalie Decker is the top three. Meanwhile, for fourth on back, it is very racy. And the SHR Fords are at the front of this pack, both of them, Riley Herbst and Cole Custer. Custer up to block the outside. Herbst goes up in front of the double zero. Custer doing most of the blocking right now as he's a second car in that group. And Herbst just kind of driving out of his rear view, trying to go where Custer goes. If there was some way for those cars to make it all the way to the end, I think they would still get caught. And I still, I mean, there's no chance they make it all the way to the end. We still have 31 laps to go yet. Half of this stage yet to be ran. And again, the field window is 45 to 50 laps as it is. A couple cars bobbling off turn four, nearly making contact. Austin Hill's starting to work his way back forward through this field once again had the pit road speeding penalty caused him to go right to the back and this is the second time he's had to come from the back to the front we've seen this with austin hill in the xfinity series on super speedways easily able to drive his way through and whether he makes it look easier or not this time around he has made his way towards the front he's leading the middle groove of cars with 30 laps to go at daytona he would be uh three wide for third in the pack and sixth place overall in the race, again behind the two SHR Fords of Custer and Herbst, who are at the top groove of the racetrack, still trying to set the pace. Herbst caught a lapper, drives around him, and now the lap car is going to get in the way of Cole Custer and the rest of that outside lane. Nowhere to go right now, and that's going to leave a much bigger run on the bottom. And pulling out of line is Austin Hill. To make the pass for the lead, he shoots up ahead of Riley Herbst. Middle of the corner, Herbst with the crossover. Looks back to the inside. Lap car going to go with him. And they're side by side again down the back stretch. And Herbst is clear of Austin Hill. And Hill starts to go backwards just a little bit. Headed for turn three. And now Hill up into that middle groove. And he's going to try to go back for the race lead three wide. The eventual race lead, again, might I add. This pack is going at it, though. Three by three through the field. The top three on the leaderboard still have to pit. This group, 24 seconds behind them from fourth on back, is racing for what would be the win with 29 to go. Austin Hill underneath of Riley Herbst side by side for the lead. Three wide out of the rear view of both cars. Hill on the bottom. Herbst on the outside. Herbst near the wall. Hill, at least in the middle of the corner, was down on the double yellow line. Middle of the back straightaway. He goes up. He side drafts the 98. Not too aggressively. Back to the bottom. He's trying to block. There was a big run coming by Ryan Sieg. Sieg goes to the middle groove with that run. And now Ryan Sieg's trying to get to the front of the pack. And Sieg's going to get underneath of the 98. 21 still there. Herb's clear again in the center of the trial. Well, he's staying up with his teammate Custer right now, though. He hasn't made any major blocks since getting to the front of this group. Herb's run the, ran, excuse me, the Daytona 500 earlier today. 
Going double duty in this one. The edge of your seat action here in the closing laps of this NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Daytona. About what it was in the Cup Series race, really, in the final 20 laps or so is what we're seeing right now here in this Xfinity race, with a little bit more than that left. A lot of lane changing going on in the middle of that pack whenever there's a hole. Car's trying to fill it. And we'll see with Austin Hill at the front of this pack if anybody's actually able to get as good of a run on him compared to what they were able to do on Herbst and Custer when they were leading it. Herbst and Custer are still in the outside lane, but they're now the third and fourth cars in that line. The 39 of Ryan Sieg had practically followed Austin Hill that second time through the middle groove when Hill took the pack lead. Still 23 seconds behind the top three. And it's starting to single file out a little bit more at the front of this pack up near the wall. coming off the wall just a little bit thought that there may have been a move coming from Ryan Sieg not the case and as these guys get the single file their lap times will pick up a little bit and they may catch that three car group of leaders a little bit quicker if they get organized still about 22 seconds behind him at the line the last time by 25 laps to go side by side commercial break coverage on FS1 we'll go through the full field running order once again Ryan Ellis leads Garrett Smithley is second Natalie Decker third Austin Hill fourth Ryan Seek fifth Riley Herbst sixth Cole Custer seventh eighth place for Chandler Smith Ryan Truex ninth Jeb Burton tenth Shane Van Gisbergen eleventh Justin Allgaier twelfth uh thirteenth for Sage Karam or rather, Daniel Dye, now Allgaier back to 14th, uh, Kara moved up to 12th. A.J. Elmendinger, 15th, Brandon Jones, 16th, Parker Retzlaff, 17th, Sammy Smith, 18th, John Hunter Nemechek, 19th, Jesse Love, 20th, Leland Honeyman, 21st, Jordan Anderson, 22nd, Sheldon Creed, 23rd, Brandon Poole, 24th, Jeremy Clements, 25th, Blaine Perkins, 26th, B.J. McLeod, 27th, he's the last car in the lead lap. Patrick Emerly, first car lap down in 28th, Parker Kligerman, 29th, two laps down, Josh Williams, 34th, Daniel Suarez, 35th, Sam Mayer, 36th, Haley Deegan, 37th, and Kyle Weatherman, 38th. Trouble on the front stretch. 27 car to caught in the grass. Caution flag is out. That would be Jeb Burton may have gotten turned. As they entered the trioval, this will bunch the field. Well, they were already bunched together, but now they're going to be back to the front. Those three cars that haven't pitted yet will pit and put themselves at the tail end of the leading lap so they can make it on fuel and doesn't look like many cars were involved in this incident, thankfully. As we have 24 laps to go at Daytona. We'll take a quick ad break. And while we're also under caution, my phone should have enough charge in it. Try to get it real quick. Actually, before I do that, take a look at the replay and see what happened. Big run for Jeb Burton on the 21 of Austin Hill. Fourth to fifth in line were those two cars on the outside. And somebody just tried to pull up into the outside behind Jeb Burton and turned him. It looked like it may have been Sage Karam, but I'm not entirely sure. Try to see a number, potentially. It looked like Sage Karam. I tried to jump in line between Jeb Burton and... And Justin Allgaier, there just wasn't a hole there. And unfortunately, it turned Jeb Burton in the left rear corner panel. He goes down the racetrack. And luckily, when he slid through the grass, it didn't tear the front of the race car up, which we had seen with a couple other cars, both in the Cup and Xfinity Series races earlier today. The very few moments that we would see somebody sliding nose first into the grass, how wet it is. Almost two inches of rain in the Daytona area. Over the last 48 hours, at least, uh, between Saturday and Sunday. 
practically all day Saturday, Sunday. Jeb's still in it, though. He doesn't have a lot of damage. It's going to be tough, though, coming from around 30th place. But not impossible. Still going to have probably a little bit less than 20 laps to go when we get back to racing. Be right back one second. Kind of curious to see what is going to be uh, quicker. I wonder if my TV or if uh, my phone is going to be slightly faster. Well, one's probably going to be slightly faster than the other. About to find out. Whatever one is, that's the one I'm using. For audio, I will have to use my phone. To Burton on Pit Road. Uh, looks like my phone is actually a little bit quicker. Which I'm quite surprised. It's not by much. It's probably at least five seconds faster. That's what I usually use anyway. Words cannot express this year's Daytona 500. Yeah, it is tough to kind of put, you know, as a whole. It was a good race. I mean, it, it wasn't a bad race by any means. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, like, how much of it is it being ran on a Monday afternoon and the Xfinity race, you know, afterwards feels weird. I mean, this hasn't happened before, but. Byron getting the win, it was nice to see a, you know, an actual, and not necessarily an underdog getting the win and seeing a legitimate, you know, championship contending driver win the Daytona 500. Byron, again, in the championship four last year, maybe a future champion of the sport, one can only assume I'm sure he'll be with Hendrick Motorsports for a long, long time to come. Would not doubt if it's his whole career, really, at the rate he's going right now. Going to be a wild finish for the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Daytona. Good stops for the leaders. They're finally giving it up and getting their service rating. Well, definitely some cars that were happy that, cup, that caution came out at them. They will not have to make a green flag stop to 43 Ryan Ellis. It's going to be a simple stop for him. The main thing they told him is to make sure no other cars were coming in when he got ready to leave so they don't damage that car because they got potential for a good run. And the 36 of Natalie Decker, she was extremely happy when the yellow came out, really pumping up her crew and telling them, great job on the calls. I like those calls. It gave them a shot. It gave them a shot to stay out of the big mess if there was one. It gave them a shot to get their sponsors on TV. They're leading at Daytona, and that's pretty cool. So right here in the middle of it, with 20 to go. There's Two other drivers from that lead pack came down pit road as well. Natalie Decker leading seven laps tonight. Congratulations on that. And congratulations as well. In fact, she got once again, be sure to hit that like button if you guys have not done so yet on the stream and subscribe for more great NASCAR live commentary content throughout the rest of 2024. We'll have every NASCAR Cup Xfinity and Truck Series race right here for you on the channel. I wouldn't, it, I mean, the 500 was not a wreck fest by any means. There was one big wreck, which happens almost every super speedway race since before I was born. 
Like, it happens. And that was it. I mean, I mean, there was a wreck. It only took out, like, what, four, three cars, I think. Only three cars DNF'd from the wreck on lap four. And then they didn't have another wreck for an incident until eight to go. And the race ended under yellow, but it was just a two-car incident at the end. Between Chastain and Cindric. Let you listen into more of the race commentary when we get back into it. Our goal is 100 likes on the stream. We're at 90 right now. So be sure to hit that like button if you haven't yet. And try to get that to 100 to our goal before the end of this stream. Uh, 100 is usually our goal for the Xfinity series, but obviously this one taking place on a Monday. It was going to be harder to get there Monday night nonetheless. Not just a Monday afternoon. It is a Monday late night. A lot of people probably watched the Daytona 500, maybe watched the start of this race, and was like, yeah, I got to go to bed because I got to work the next day. Well, that would have been me if I didn't have the YouTube channel, but right here, giving you content all the way through the rest of this race. And we're down to just 20 laps to go. We'll take our final ad break of this one, continue the live commentary coverage for the rest of this race ad-free. A good call as soon as he got to the pit box crew chief said the left rear looks like it was down they're checking over the rest of the car he's come from the back to the front a couple times tonight we're gonna get to see it again potentially here it's been some good tv regan get your pop get your popcorn ready right michael this cat has been wheeling it right up the middle to the front he's fun got, to watch he's got his four tires he wanted yes. again again he goes about getting them in a different way doesn't he see our top 10 there give a shout out to daniel die He's a truck regular, making this Xfinity start, has a top 10 run going. Ryan Sieg leading this race late at Daytona, and that's a fast forward, too. He's done a good job of holding his own up there. He made a lot of moves to get that lead. Sage really Carroll in sixth place. A lot of good stories up in the top 10, even after those, even after that caution. Did have some penalties on pit road for Decker, Ellis, and Blaine Perkins. But they had made those pit stops not many pitted, so dropping to the rear for this restart shouldn't be an enormous loss of track position. Celebrate the guy out front. Ryan Sieg takes over the race lead. Journeyman in the NASCAR Xfinity Series has never won one of these races. He's been close so many times and uh, you and i've said it how, how many times michael the party the celebration is going to be incredible when he finally gets it done well his father is down in the pits right now cheering his young son on and pulling for this team to get that victory because like you said you see what he's doing tonight he's got the ability to go to victory lane and this is a family-owned team and just does a great job behind the wheel yeah that family puts their heart and soul into this it'd be uh, it'd be nice to see it would be cool Let's get an Austin Hill radio update after the pit road situation when they came down and made the stop. Good job feeling that there, man. We would have never made it to the end of the race if you stayed out there and went green, so we're, we at least still have a fight chance doing it this way. Yeah, of course. What do we do now, Andy? Do we charge from the word go? We only got 20 laps to go. That's the only thing you can do right now. <laughs> Jeff Burton. Had that spin that brought out the caution. He did lose a lap. He's 28th. Free pass went to Patrick Emberling. He's back on the lead lap. 27 cars going to be on the lead lap here. Michael said it. We're inside of 20 laps to go. Going to be 18 remaining when we return to the green flag. And there are going to be 18 of the most intense laps of the day. And I say that... Uh, reluctantly because they've been pretty intense already like the thing has been just so competitive three wide most of the way a lot of great racing look what's happened here on a restart manufacturer teammates working together as riley herbst takes that outside lane going behind ryan sieg and a couple of those joe gibbs toyotas on the inside chandler smith in front of ryan truex three fords yeah cole custer there as well strung out on the outside How about A.J. Allmendinger having a day? Sixth in the Daytona 500, coming back to the Xfinity Series full-time. 
and he's got a real shot to make a play here. I'll be surprised if he doesn't have something to say about who wins this race. Colleg Racing has 23 wins all time, 15 of those courtesy of A.J. Allmendinger. Not only is he a great driver, he's a great spirit. Always fun to be around. And when he wins a race now, you can, you can tell he's happy. He's passionate about what he does. He's a dad now, too. Congratulations on that. Try to get another mouth to feed. You better get going. Big push in the outside lane for those fours. Those things have some steam under the hood. Don't want to get too far out in front of the pack. Yeah, they've broken apart. Yeah, this can work against you to get that far out. Oh, nice job of sliding up, sliding up and taking that line. Now what do we do? Well, we go for it. Riley Herb sliding to the inside. Looked like a little side wrap there off of Ryan Sieg and debris on track. We've got our eight. Uh, Leland Honeyman. Been a solid day for that Young's Motorsports rookie. But it looks like he's it's done. Over. And then Gisberg has got damage. More damage. Still rolling, though. Garrett Smithley. He's been through a lot tonight, and the car shows it. All right, let's go, Jerry McClemens. He's been through a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if the shoe fits, right? <laughs> Oh, look at that. Looks like Parker Retzloff and Jeremy Clemens were arguing over space. And Honeyman got the worst of the deal. We've seen that a handful of times tonight where it's just, I mean, we're talking about no more than a foot or so that these guys can cut, cut each other a break and not cause these, but uh, you've had quite a few cautions because of it. Well, if you're going to cut someone a break, uh, you're not doing it anymore. You're just going to race hard. Remember, Austin Hill was back there. Look at that. Now, yeah, we're talking about, you know, less than six inches. But Ratzlaff would not let him have that six inches and was able just to drive through it. Right for Jim Burton. shot of him earlier when he was out of control. Jim just can't catch a break tonight, can he? He's had a good car. The unfortunate thing, he had gone a lap down. So a caution would have put him in line for the free pass. Unfortunately, he's he a part of the caution and therefore does not qualify. Honeyman's car on the hook. Burton back on pit road. Smithley in as well. The college guys are trying to get Shane Van Gisberg back out here see if he can get a finish out of this. If you go back to the beginning portion of this race, Suarez gets knocked out. And all the other college cars were involved in that other accident that, that we had early. And they've done a good job of staying in the game. When you talk about Almendinger, we mentioned Daniel Dye, Shane Van Gisberg has done a nice job. So they might have something to show for tonight, even though they've been banged up. Don't go through a roll, roll or two of tape. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Might add to that budget line item as we've moved to Atlanta. Going to be inside of 15 laps to go when we go back to the green flag at Daytona. 16 laps left at the Daytona International Speedway in the running of the United Rentals 300 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. More cautions in today's NASCAR Xfinity race and what we saw in the Daytona 500. Again, just five cautions in the 500. This is our eighth caution of the race, which struck at lap 102, involving the 6, 27, 42, and 51. Jeremy Clements, Leland Honeyman, Jeb Burton, and uh, Garrett Smithley. Smithley looks to be still on the lead lap.
second incident he's been involved in today. 26 cars are still scored on the lead lap in this race. Ryan Sieg is your race leader. Riley Herbst is second. Cole Custer, third. Chandler Smith, fourth. Sage Karam, fifth. A.J. Allmendinger, sixth. Ryan Truex, seventh. Eighth place for Sammy Smith. Brandon Jones, ninth. And Sheldon Creed rounds out the top ten. Daytona 500 today was uh, three hours and ten minutes. This race a little bit under the two and a half hour mark right now. If I remember correctly, I think the Truck Series race took uh, over two and a half hours <laughs> for a hundred laps, nonetheless. I might have to go back. Uh, let, let's look at that real quick. Let's look at the Truck Series race stats from this weekend. introduce you to someone that has sold tickets at the Daytona International Raceway since it opened in 1959. And before that, she even sold tickets to the beach races with Betty Jane France. She's so famous, they even named the ticket office after her. Let's go meet Juanita Lightning Epton. Hello, it's Michael. I'm here. Everything can start then. That's right, we can go. I gotta, I gotta ask you a question. Okay. 103 years old. What What is your key? I guess it's the Lord. I go to and from work every day. That is incredible. I don't feel bad. I can hardly wait to get here. What are some of the favorite memories you have from this job? Selling tickets down on the beach and seeing the cars come off of the ocean front onto the pavement. The expression in, in the faces was amazing. You couldn't help but be part of it. What did it feel like when they said, we're going to name the ticket office after you, Lightning? I almost fainted. I felt so honored to think that they cared enough about me to name the office for me. But I've always wondered, and I don't think I've ever asked you, how did you get the nickname Lightning? My husband gave it to me. He said he never knew when or where I'd strike. <laughs> And I struck for 62 years. And then I have just one last question. I, I kind of need a couple of tickets. I heard it sold out. You have any in your drawer there? Nope. Yeah, you're on a tight ship. You have to. <laughs> Well done. That Michael. was great. It just what, warms my heart. She's what a such sweetheart. A, uh, she's, her spirit is amazing. We spent a couple of uh, days together here at Daytona, and I've been visiting her over the ticket office for a few years now. We've become buddies. You're just trying to butter her up to get some tickets for yeah, her to come back. I, I, next year, maybe yeah. she can slide me a couple. But uh, I'm guessing no. Uh, no, uh, she's, she loves her job, and she just loves this racetrack. And look at that sweet lady. A legend. Lightning, 103 years old. Juanita Epton. Still going to work every day. <laughs> so here we are. Hey, inside of 15 laps to go, it's getting good. We're I'm still caution. working, too. We, yeah, we are. We're, we're closing on two days in a row at, at the racetrack. What do we anticipate here? What are we watching? I've just been watching Ryan C with that fast forward, but with aggressive blocks he's making. And now, you know, can he continue to get away with those blocks? We know how tough it's going to be to do just that. And then Herbst, he's another driver right there up front that's been really, really aggressive. Yeah, so, I, I like Riley Herbst's position here, and I'm, I'm like you with with Sig, I'm just all these blocks that he's made have been so close to being a problem. I, I just you know, as it gets more intense here, he might not get away with it. You know what I love, Adam? We talked about all the Chevys in the race and the Chevys on the front row. We got three Fords that are pretty much taking up the front of the pack here lately with Cole Custer joining those two on the front row. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Fords can hang on or who wins this race. Chevy's won 12 of the last 13, and, and it's all because of what we've talked about, the strength in numbers. But the only non-Chevy to win, when you talk about the last seven or so years for the Xfinity cars at Daytona, was a Ford. Austin Sendrick got it done, went on to win the championship. So he's, uh, he's quite the player, is Austin Sendrick. They've had the lap here for debris. A lot of these cars are running around with tape all over them and some of the panels flapping in the breeze, and I say some of it has uh, come off one of the car. Do you think we're going to finish this race on Monday? No, I... Well, it, oh, we got 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Monday now. We're, you mean, I, I thought you meant we're going to bleed into Tuesdays what you were hitting. That's right. that's a, yeah, I, I, think we, I really think we got a shot to do that. I think so, too.
Let's hope not. There's going to be a lot of pushing and shoving over these next 12 laps when we go green. I guess we're just going to leave it here and go to Atlanta. Can I ride with you? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? I brought my airstream. <laughs> By the way, when Austin Cindric won here in 2021, he was the reigning champ. So he won it in 20, got the title, came here to Daytona, and got that victory for Ford in the Xfinity Series. Daytona and Austin Cindric go well together. And look at this. And Cole Custer's been big time when it comes to an Xfinity car, 13 career wins. But the rest of the top five hadn't experienced a whole lot of victories. Chandler Smith got one last year at Richmond. We talked about Riley Hurts last fall. At Las Vegas. That's funny. I called Cole Custer this morning and said, what do you expect, buddy? And he started started deep in the pack. And he said, I'm going to chill at first. But uh, he winds up up front when it counts. Austin Hill's got a lot of cars in front of him. Well, flat tire. Good call by him to yep. get to pit road. We'll see if he can. Another car to watch is John Hunter Nemechek. He's stuck back there, but he's come to the front a couple of times. Maybe those two cars can get together. 25 cars on the lead lap. Going to restart with 12 to go. There's he looks, check. He looks like he's racing Martinsville, doesn't he? There's, There's a all. handful of them that do. Yes, sir. Klagerman there, one of the pre-race favorites, started inside the top five. Caught up in that early accident. <laughs> Saved the game with her two laps now. Sheldon Creed. Right. At the tenth position, he think that he thinks this place owes him one. Consider how it finished here last August; just barely got beat by inches. Justin Allgaier edged him. And we're adding a lap again. Well, lights are on. Yep. Got to report some debris in turn two. It's been a busy week, weekend, and a few days for sure when it comes to Daytona and everything we've experienced. This was the big one, end of the Great American Race earlier tonight on Fox. And William Byron was in the big one. Got a little push from behind, shot him into another car, and away they went. Barely missed that one. Got to the line just in time. That was tight. That was very close. Daytona 500 champion. And you're talking about feet, the difference between the caution being out before he takes the white, but because he had taken the white flag, caution comes out. The race is official. Byron leading, and he gets to celebrate his first win at the Daytona 500. And what a year ahead it's going to be for Hendrick Motorsports, celebrating 40 years and all they have meant to the history of NASCAR. Williams, a young man out of Charlotte, North Carolina, that talked to his dad, Bill, into taking him to the races in Charlotte, Martinsville, watching from the grandstands. And there's the 24 that will go down in history as one of the greatest numbers ever in NASCAR. William just adding to Jeff Gordon's legacy with that number. Okay, looks like the lights are off on the pace car now. Let's do it. See how this shakes out. Two Fords out front. Ryan Sieg, Riley Herbst. A Toyota and a Ford behind them. Sage Karam, Cole Custer. The how about to the top ten? Sammy Smith, Chandler Smith, Almondinger, Jones, Creed, and Truex. Eleven to go in the season opener. Pace cars on pit road this time, and they will not add another lap of caution. We are back to racing at Daytona. Eleven laps left in the United Rentals 300 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Both SHR Fords on the bottom working together. Another Ford on the outside of Ryan Sieg. The eight pulling out of line. Sammy Smith. Nobody goes with him. He's going to get hung out to dry. And it'll go from the outside of row three to the back of the pack with not a lot of time to get back up through there. We'll see if he can do it. A lot of pushing going on. Outside lane, the 39 of Ryan C getting pushed ahead. 
I Sage Karam in the 26. Sage thought about moving down, but Riley Herbst was still there. Austin Hill trying to get a third line formed. Actually, it's not Hill. That's uh, Sheldon Creed moving up there in the 18 car. In the back half of the top 10. He moved up ahead of a couple other cars who were starting to move up into that third lane. Down to 10 laps to go at Daytona. Almost bottlenecking up in that third lane up near the wall again as they just continue to lose momentum. Cole Custer pulling out of line after his teammate Riley Herbs is able to pull down to the bottom lane in front of Ryan Sieg. Sieg gets shuffled out of line. Here comes the 81 car now into the mix. Breaking up the SHR Fords. Herbs goes to cover the 81 down to the bottom. That's Chandler Smith. Big move into the middle groove. Cole Custer shuffled back to the outside, and I believe that's Sage Karam trying to fight his way back towards the front of the pack again, and we're right back to where we left off about 15 or so laps ago prior to the second-to-last caution we had, which is 3x3 three three racing all the way through the lead pack. Chandler Smith in the 81 car, and in a Toyota trying to find his way to victory lane. While two cars underneath them look to head... Headway to the front of the field, multiple cars up against the outside wall, wrecking down into the grass towards turn three. Justin Allgaier involved in the incident, Cole Custer is caught up in it. Somebody got turned up against the outside wall about two-thirds of the way down the back straightaway. And right in the middle of the pack, there was nowhere for a few cars to go. The 10 car is in it as well of Daniel Dye. Sage Karam, who is right at the front of the pack, is also in it. And there were a few others that we haven't seen yet on camera that was also caught up in the wreck. That was not able to get on by. So this is our ninth caution of the race with eight laps to go. In the Xfinity Series season opener at Daytona. He was going to have to do a pass-through penalty. If we stay green, he's done. Now, you get the caution. He starts at the rear on the next restart with a bunch of good drivers eliminated. Don't write him off just yet. And like Michael said, it was going to be difficult for him to get out of that pack on the pit road and make that, that stop for the penalty. So he got lucky. It's like Daniel Dye stuck in the mud over there on the back. Didn't look like a ton of damage to that 10 car. As you can see, the serious... Issues with the double zero. Got to figure out some way to get some air to the engine too. And, and look at look at our scoring pylon. I mean, Herbst has shown up there. He'll have to serve penalty, but Jordan Anderson, that hard time right? He's the boss, and, <laughs> and he comes here. His father-in-law, Larry McReynolds, our colleague at Fox, is going to be his crew chief. Unfortunately, Larry can't crew chief the car because he had to go back to the studio and work the Daytona 500. And here Jordan is right at the front with a real opportunity to get his first career victory. I bet, that's Larry McReynolds' setup, right? <laughs> that's <laughs> right. He, he, he's the one that got this car put in this That's position. right. <sighs> Sage Karam right there. We see the highlight on him. He's up there in that outside lane. Getting a big run. Just too, that's just too hard. You can't hit somebody from behind that hard. I know you need to be pushing and shoving to try to get some momentum, but that was just uh, no way to kind of survive that. Yeah. There were a lot of guys that did a great job sliding through there. Jesse Love. Jesse Love. There's Daniel Dye spinning in the 10th car. Wayne Perkins. Slipping through. Yeah, see that? That bump from uh, Karen was just too much for Custer. He just couldn't help, hold on to it. Then it causes kind of a chain reaction. Look at Truex. Four wide on the bottom in the dirt. 44 off the ground yep. with his front tires. Yep. Vernon Poole taking a hop there. <laughs> Sheldon Creed squeezing through, looks like. Jordan Anderson in the 32, right up the middle for the lead. 
you saw Austin Hill driving through that. He was ahead of the mess. Cinco Custer checking the mirror to see if he's going to get a push. He got one. Man, that's such a horrible feeling. Listen to those crashes bring back a lot of bad memories, Andy. You wrecked a lot. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yes. I don't think that was a compliment. I don't think it was. No, I mean, we all do. I mean, you know what I meant. Look at Sheldon Creed. That's He's awesome. He's right in the middle of this somehow. Look at that. Did you hear him use the gas, too? Yeah. Great job. Put that all in my rearview mirror. I just got a text from Larry McReynolds. He said, I, I just sent a text to the pit box. It said, reach up there and pull those belts Bill tight one more time. More time. <laughs> Let's go. That was just a bad push by Karam. He had a big push from behind. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you... Just, it, you know, the push from the back could have been the problem for him. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell whether, you know, who's actually the yeah. one involved with those. Whether you're getting, you know, getting a bump from behind you that knocks you into somebody wow. else. Makes it kind of hard to blame somebody. Hey, Pit Road's a busy place. Guys on and off. Herb served his penalty. Allgaier's getting more work on his car. Herbst has dropped to the rear. Let's listen in. Apparently, they're saying we laid back. I don't, I don't know. Extra, the leader is supposed to have a right. NASCAR, I'm not supposed to be ahead of the leader in the box. Of course, I laid back. The leader is always supposed to have privilege. Can't argue that. No, but he did. But, they, he, but you do have to let the leader fire first, and it looked to me like the 98 fired first. Regan? One well, Adam, that radio communication came well after the caution had come out. It took a while until they got the message to Riley that he had that restart violation. As you heard right there, he disagreed with it. He was not happy about it, but they ultimately decided to go ahead and top off the fuel. They were a little concerned about fuel. They kept telling him to save fuel up until that point, so now he doesn't have to worry about it for the last, last few laps here. Daniel doesn't look like he's got significant damage, does he? No, but he's stuck in the mud all the way up to the axle. I'm surprised we haven't seen that more. I think we've got to get a tow truck for the tow truck. Oh, he's good. He's sunk down in there. It's pretty, pretty good with those rear tires. If you're wondering how much rain we've had here the last couple of days, Daytona Beach, Florida, this might help answer the question. Wonder no more. And now we tape it up. Spin. Countless hours, Andy, tuning these things, tweaking them to bring them to Daytona. Just exactly right. Get that last little bit, and then you just wrap it up a tank and see what you got. Seeing Cole Custer here it reminds me of a season ago. We came to Daytona after going to Cup, winning a race, being Rookie of the Year. He came back to the Xfinity Series, and we all just knew he was going to be the man to be. And they kind of struggled. Out Early. of the gates. And Very surprising yeah, last year. Find a way. It tracks where you just felt for sure they would be the team to be. But come June, July, they start putting the pieces together. Once they got in the playoffs, they got on an incredible run, wins Phoenix, and brings home his first championship. It was a, a fun run to the end of the year for them. That was one of the coolest two laps of the year at Phoenix. When Cole, it really was. Cole took off from the point. Dropped all the way back to third or fourth on that lap and was able to charge through and get the victory. And uh, that was just fun to watch. Three wide at Phoenix. That doesn't happen much. He was making it work. Well, we're going to have inside of five laps to go when we go racing again. Let's go back and look what happened last year. This was the final lap. Austin Hill racing three wide at the front. Sam Bayer goes upside down. And by that much, when the caution came out, Austin Hill made it back-to-back -back wins at Daytona in February. In August, we had another shootout to the finish. Justin Allgaier by inches over Shelton Creed, who was driving the two at the time. Five one thousandths of a second. That was all guyers.
First win at Daytona, but it was the eighth for Junior Motorsports by eight different drivers. Wow. They have a good program here. Eight different drivers. RCR with a good program as well. They've won here eight times as an organization too. So that's the best. You talk about those two groups. The old uh, corn car looks pretty good from this side. It's in a mess on the other. Finally got Daniel out of the mud. Yeah, they had to add a lap. They were going to go green there, but they couldn't get all that sorted out. We did the choose. And Jordan Anderson went to the outside. He's going to have a Chevy behind him in Austin Hill. Let's look back at what we've had so far. Long day here in Daytona for all these Xfinity teams. Thought they were going to race at 11 this morning. Rain wouldn't allow that. Went green 9 o'clock Eastern time, and it was on early. Uh, on early for Sam Mayer. Daniel Suarez with some issues. The rookie by nose, Jesse Love, takes the first stage. You'll have the big one when you come to Daytona. And some big names caught up in this accident. Justin Allgaier racing for the lead gets shot out of line. A little debris off turn two that Cole Custer avoided, and they came together. As you see, Austin Hill, fast car, patched up. He gets the second stage. And then here's Austin Hill running third gear, 100 miles an hour down pin road. Had to line up at the rear of the field after that one. He's coming in line. Been a crazy day for Austin Hill, and then this mess. Cole Custer just turned in the outside wall. Yeah, nothing he could do. Just caused all the melee behind him. Brandon Jones slip, slipping through there. And watch this 44 of Brendan Poole get caught. Watch it. He, he gets a little air right here. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Sage Karam has been released from the care center. That's good news. He just came by, got the one to go signal. There'll be four, four remaining now. It'll be three to go when we go back racing. Who you got? Who you got, Andy P? Wow, I don't know. I like I like Austin Hill's chances. Lined up on the outside lane. It's number two. Jordan Anderson. Runner up here twice in the Craftsman Truck Series, never won in an Xfinity car, becomes a, a car owner. His team won last year when Jeff Burton got it done in Talladega. Not only is Jordan on the front row, you see Parker Retzloff right there. Third row outside behind Jordan. And there's Austin Hill. And Retzloff has been a big pusher today. He's had a lot of, a lot of steam. Be interested to see if he can paying with Austin Hill. I think Austin's going places. I'm going to agree with you, Andy. Ron Sieg's been, and he's been a good pusher, too. We'll see what he can do. Maybe push Chandler Smith out front. I want to report that Jeremy Clements has been released from the care center. Looking at the top ten, Jordan Anderson hasn't won. Chandler Smith, one career win. Ryan Sieg hasn't won. One victory in his career for Ryan Truex. Retzloff hasn't won. Sammy Smith has one win. Shelton Creed in the top ten. He's not been to victory lane. We could have a lot of fun at the checkered flag tonight. I don't know if we'll have any more fun than if Ryan Z goes to victory lane, because I've already got a couple of texts from his dad, Ryan, <laughs> from the pit box. He said, we're going to get this thing. There's a lot of folks, Adam, that we see on a weekly basis that you know just what how much it would mean to get this win at Daytona. You just want the opportunity. Right here, these guys have it. I see anybody in the top six got a good shot at winning this look at jesse love he's back there all right three lap green white checker shootout of course we get to the white flag the next flag would end the race both the truck and i should say truck arca and cup series races ended under yellow this weekend can the xfinity series ended under green as we're back to racing jordan anderson on the front row alongside chandler smith smith in the bottom lane anderson on the outside Two Chevys trying to lead the way up there. Austin Hill still in the mix is the outside of row two behind Jordan Anderson. That inside lane taken off strong, though. Off the initial start, Chandler Smith is all clear by himself in the middle of one and two. Pack still working their way up to speed now. Just off turn two down the back straightaway. 
Uh, blocked, nope, not quite. Anderson pushed to the lead. Numbers are fading behind the 81 car. He is going to find himself in line, though. Right in front of Ryan Sieg, Retzlaff is going to go to the bottom. The other Jordan Anderson racing car now into the top five as he moves to fourth. Front four cars on the bottom lane, all single file. Austin Hill goes up. He's going to get around Jordan Anderson. Anderson is going to get hung out to dry. Chandler Smith is going to find himself back at second, still behind Hill. Two to go. Now it's Austin Hill trying to win back-to-back -back season openers at Daytona. The Super Speedway ace of the NASCAR Xfinity Series at 29 years of age trying to do it again. He won Stage 2, was second at the end of Stage 1, hasn't led as many laps tonight, was involved in a couple different incidences. And remember, he restarted back in the 26th place position on the second to last restart, which took place with 11 to go. A couple moves being made behind him. He's driving out of the rearview mirror, goes down to the WO line to protect his lead into turn three. Brandon Jones is up third, winless a season to go with JRM. Going to the outside, he gets blocked by Chandler Smith. Now he's in that outside lane and fading fast. Chandler Smith gets bumped off the bottom, and Sheldon Creed's up to second. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Final lap of the race. Hill leads into turn one. Chandler Smith pushing him. Chandler Smith's going to try to, or I should say Sheldon Creed, sorry. Sheldon Creed is pushing. Creed in second. Trouble behind him. The 39 is going to get backed up against the wall. No caution yet. Still green. Still green. Surprise! there was no yellow there. They might try to let him race back. Austin Hill's got a major gap over the 18 car. Hill is gone. And as they race off of turn four, no caution flag for the wreck on the backstretch. Austin Hill is going to win at Daytona in the season opener two years in a row. Hill wins it. Sheldon Creed second. Jordan Anderson third. Parker Retzlaff fourth. Both the Jordan Anderson cars on the top five. And Chandler Smith rounds out the top five in fifth place. I am shocked that they let him race through that. I think NASCAR fell asleep. Race control fell asleep there off turn two. <laughs> a couple cars spinning, coming back across the track towards the front of the field, too. I mean, Ryan Sieg, who was in the midst of that spin, was either third or fourth when that had taken place. And Austin Hill's dominance on the super speedways continue, and we'll get to see if he can do it again next week at his home track at Atlanta Motor Speedway, where he won the spring race there a season ago as well. He's got a legitimate shot here to start two for two this season. He did win three of the first five races last year. Those wins tapered off relatively quickly. John Hunter Nemechek was the series leader in wins last season. The only race that ends under green was a race that probably shouldn't have ended under green considering that there was a wreck off turn two, but it still did. This weekend, that's excluding, of course, the dual races that took place Thursday night, but the overall points-paying races, ARCA, Truck, Xfinity, and Cup, and this is the one that finishes without a caution. Austin Hill, or finishes not under caution. But yeah, again, Austin Hill, burning it down in the grass right now, just doing a bunch of donuts in the wet grass. Two years in a row for Austin Hill going to victory lane in the Xfinity Series opener at Daytona. I mean, I don't even know what does this give him Xfinity Series wins now in his career. It's three in the last calendar year between Daytona last season, Atlanta in the spring. Whatever the case is, he's won another one. Really is amazing to watch. This style of racetrack. I mean, he came from the back to the front at least twice in this race, if not three times. It made it look easy there at the end, controlling the lanes when needed. Never got anybody back up alongside of him. Great move, by the way. He was able to pull on Jordan Anderson for the race lead, coming to two to go. Look at that car. We never rode him off, though. We, no. never, we never lost faith. He wouldn't let us. He yeah. kept coming to the front. He looked at us. He could do it at the end, but he did it. Regan? 
Austin Hill celebrates with his team as they walk away right now. Austin, I don't know that I've ever seen a race where a driver's gone through as much as you did. You had a crash early on. You fix that. You get a flat tire. Then you go to the back again. Multiple things, and you get your third win at Daytona. How does this one feel? Oh, I mean, it, it tops it all. 3P, I mean, you know how hard it is to win at Daytona? God almighty. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what was going on with me on pit road today, um, but my guys just kept telling me, look, man, dig deep. You're really good at these super speedways. Uh, I tried to screw it up on pit road, sped on pit road, slid through the box, about slid through the box on the first stop. But, uh, man, this minute Chevrolet was – as fast as Xfinity, Xfinity 10G, that's for damn sure. Uh, thank you for all these fans that stuck it out. I know it's late. I don't even know what time it is. I know it's past my bedtime, but uh, we're about to party tonight, I can tell you that. I am so stoked. This is this is incredible. And to win, with it being the Nine Rails 300, a uh, longtime sponsor of mine, uh, I can't get any better. Austin Hill wins his third straight at Daytona. He said it. You guys know it. It's not easy to win here. And he's now done it three consecutive years in February. So impressive for Austin Hill. And I just Unbelievable. Three in a row for Austin Hill in the season opener at Daytona. Uh, margin of victory, half a second over Sheldon Creed. You don't see that usually at Daytona, but for whatever reason, again, there was no caution on the final lap of the race uh, with Sammy Smith and Ryan Seed getting caught up in that incident. I think uh, Ryan Truex might have been in it as well maybe a few others we'll go through the official results for today's race uh again hill with the race win by half a second over sheldon creed in second former teammates there and they were battling throughout the course of the night for the race lead off and on uh jordan anderson great run restarted on the final restart uh in the second place position and obviously or in the lead on the outside of the front row was able to hold on for about a lap and a half before hill was able to get around him uh anderson still finishes third Another one of his race cars right behind him in fourth, the Parker Retzlaff and Chandler Smith in the 81 back at Toyota now in the Xfinity Series with Toyota full-time, ends up finishing in fifth. Riley Herbst with a sixth place run, highest finishing four, John Hunter Nemechek in seventh. Top tens for John Hunter Nemechek in both the Daytona 500 and the NASCAR Xfinity Series season opener here today. 800 miles and two top tens for John Hunter Nemechek at Daytona nonetheless. Great job by him all day today. Justin Allgaier finishes in 8th place, Brandon Jones in ninth. A.J. Allmendinger also a top 10 in both races, 5th in the Daytona 500, 10th here today. Again, shout out to A.J. for pulling double duty at Daytona nonetheless and actually making it to the end of not one, but two super speedway races in the same day. Another 800 mile event for him. Ryan Ellis had a solid day, led some laps, ended up finishing in 11th. Shane Van Gisbergen had his Xfinity debut nonetheless on a super speedway and a super speedway Debut, at least in the NASCAR Xfinity Series as well. Finishes 12th. Solid run for SVG, and that was even getting caught up in a wreck. Um, a couple different wrecks earlier in the race. Kept it in the race and missed that last one. And uh, again, got his way middle of the pack to a 12th place run. Cole Custer, 13th place finish for him. Blaine Perkins, 14th. BJ McLeod, 15th. Garrett Smithley in 16th. Patrick Emerly, 17th. Natalie Decker, 18th. Brennan Poole, 19th. And Jesse Love rounds out the top 20. Ryan Truex, 21st. Ryan Seed, 22nd. Sammy Smith was the last car in the lead lap in 23rd. Anthony Alfredo finishes two laps down in 24th. Parker Kligerman, 25th. Jeb Burton, 26th. 27th for Daniel Dye. Sage Karam, 28th. Jeremy Clements, 29th. Leland Honeyman in 30th. Dawson Cram, 31st. Josh Balicki, 32nd. Frankie Muniz, 33rd. Josh Williams, 34th. Daniel Suarez, 35th. Sam Mayer, 36th, 37th for Haley Deegan, and Kyle Weatherman finishes 38th. Most laps led in this one was rookie and pole sitter Jesse Love, the second pole sitter today to lead the most laps, same like Logano in the Daytona 500. No other driver other than Ryan Ellis on fuel strategy led more than double-digit laps. I guess I see uh, Ryan Segan there leading 12 laps as well. Shout out to him again. He had a great day until that last lap crash was up in the top. Uh, three or four positions there at the very end. Count how many different leaders we ended up having. Uh, 14 drivers led at least one lap in the race today. 
And we had 21 lead changes amongst those 14 drivers in this 120 lap race. How about that? No overtime in the Xfinity or the Cup Series races at Daytona. Again, this one at least ends under green. Nine cautions total in the race as well. And the total time on this 300-mile race, 2 hours, 46 minutes, 27 seconds. That's actually pretty long for an Xfinity race. Um, average race speed of 116.34 miles per hour. I mean, just to think, the Daytona 500, which was an extra 200 miles in length, only lasted another 25 minutes than this race did. The 500 was done at 3 hours and 10 minutes, and this was done at 2 hours and 46 minutes. And uh, it only had four more cautions, so it's kind of rare that uh, four more yellows made it that much uh, longer for whatever reason. The, li the length of period it took under cautions was pretty exponential. I think a lot of the safety crews and all that probably went home, I would have to imagine, or at least left the racetrack after the Daytona 500 because, I mean, the, the cautions were pretty lengthy. There was a few different times where they ended up having to put the lights back on in the pace car before they went green. But needless to say, we've got it in the books. 800 miles. Uh, we're all done on the channel. That's going to wrap up Speed Weeks for 2024 right here on KRC. Tune in next weekend. Live commentary coverage all day Saturday for NASCAR, Truck, Xfinity, and Cup Series action. And as well as, of course, the Ambetter Health 400 at Atlanta next Sunday afternoon for the Cup Series. Our start times for next week would look like this. 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. We'll have live commentary of the qualifying session at Atlanta for the NASCAR Cup Series, followed by at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race at Atlanta Motor Speedway, followed by at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also Saturday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series race triple header for you guys on Saturday. And then, of course, the NASCAR Cup Series race will be taking place all alone on Sunday next week. 2.30 is when we'll go live with our pre-race coverage, and the drop of the green flag will be shortly after 3 o'clock. Have a good rest of your, well, now it's, now it's Tuesday morning, actually. It was Monday night. It is Tuesday morning. We made it to midnight. I got to get up for work in like six and a half hours. I will see you guys back and better than ever again next weekend. Thank you for all your coverage. Uh, all of your guys' eyeballs on these streams throughout our coverage of Speed Weeks. Again, uh, we kicked things off on Wednesday night, uh, five days ago, for Daytona 500 qualifying. Uh, we had a little bit of a lull, obviously, with the NASCAR Xfinity race getting moved. Um, it's the, thanks for staying up late, not once but twice this week as well. Friday, we were streaming until 1.45 in the morning for the ARCA race. Uh, big week, again, on the channel, as it usually is for Speed Weeks, but... Uh, this one is in the books. Another one. Hopefully you enjoyed today's coverage of not only this United Rentals 300 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, but also the Daytona 500 coverage that we had for you guys earlier today as well. Congrats to Austin Hill for winning in this uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series season opener. And again, congrats to William Byron winning the Daytona 500 for the first time in his NASCAR Cup career at age 26. See you guys next weekend. Have a good next couple days. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time.